Northern Illinois and Troy getting set to do battle out in San Jose in Spartan Stadium. Unfortunately, there was a citywide power hit in San Jose. It took out our television truck. We are diligently working to restore all of the power in the situations there that would allow us to televise that game from San Jose. But right now, technical difficulties are keeping us from doing that. I know that's a disappointment for those of you in DeKalb looking forward to Northern Illinois' return to a bowl game. And Troy down in the Wiregrass area of Alabama making its first appearance in a bowl game since moving to Division 1A. Dave Ryan is out in San Jose. He was going to work sidelines for us in this game and still hopes to do so. Dave Ryan is standing by with the latest from what's going on in San Jose. Well, Reese, we hope to get a football game going here pretty soon. As you mentioned, the uh, power outage is causing all sorts of trouble with our production truck, which is right behind us here outside Spartan Stadium. So we are hoping very soon to get a generator, which I understand is on the way. Once that generator is in place, there's a pretty good chance that we'll get power enough to have this football game on ESPN2. Uh, the stadium officials, the bowl officials, will hold kick for a few minutes. We're not sure exactly how long they will, though, and that's a very big key. Ten minutes, I'm told, by our, our crew here uh, in San Jose. So we're hoping to get everything in line and get uh, this football game on the air. I talked with Joe Novak, the uh, Northern Illinois coach, a few minutes ago, and he said, we want to have uh, this game on TV. It's a big deal for them, as you know very well. Uh, first bowl game for them since 1983, and for Troy, first bowl game in school history. Uh, in 1A. So this is a big moment for each school. The field conditions will be interesting once we get going. It's uh, going to be a quagmire out there for each. Troy plays a lot of games on the field turf, as does Northern during the regular season. So in terms of grass and the mud and the muck we'll have, it'll be kind of a new experience for each team. All right, Dave, and we'll look forward to hopefully getting out to San Jose. You mentioned the field conditions. Certainly that was an issue not too far away from San Jose this afternoon in San Francisco in the Emerald Bowl when Navy took on New Mexico field conditions at SBC Park. It wouldn't have let Barry Bonds be running around in the outfield there. A lot of water, <laughs> a lot of mud, a lot of slipping and falling, but certainly for the midshipmen, an opportunity to play their final football game for 39 of the midshipmen seniors. New Mexico marched it right down the field early, took a 7-0 lead, and then Aaron Polanco started putting on a show. Great job. Just goes back to pass, doesn't find anything, uses his feet, 14 yards for the touchdown. And this was a <laughs> moment for the Lobos. <laughs> Or their state running back takes a wicked hit. He fumbled the ball, but that was the least of the Lobos' worries. More unable to return to the game. And then Polanco keeping for another touchdown that allowed Polanco to tie Walter Washington for most rushing touchdowns for a quarterback this season's bowl game stats do count. Cole McCamey threw a pick to Josh Smith. And then Polanco showing off the arm. A beautifully thrown ball to Corey Dryden. Well, the run sets it up, the play action pass, but what a wonderful pass by Aaron Polanco putting the ball right on the money. And here's where Polanco would take the lead in touchdown rushes. Trev, the diversity of this option offense. The option never really looks the same with Paul Johnson. It doesn't look the same. You don't know who has the ball. You have to stop each phase. First start with a fullback, Kyle Echol, then go to the quarterback. They didn't get it done there. And the defense with a goal line stand on a fourth down play deep in the third quarter. D.D. Cox was in there for more. Did you notice how the time just sort of disappeared there before New Mexico has its last chance here down 15 points? McCamey gets knocked down by Smith and Paul Johnson celebrating. You would expect midshipmen to flourish in wet weather and they hoist the trophy a high. 34 to 19, Navy beats New Mexico. Notice that little stat over on the right side of your screen. What's New that? Mexico ran only seven plays in the fourth quarter. This is why Navy had a drive that lasted longer than the John McEnroe show and Britney Spears' first marriage combined. 14 minutes and 26 seconds. They ran 26 plays. They had to empty the playbook on this thing. It stretched. It stretched from the third quarter, ate up almost the entire fourth quarter. In fact, had New Mexico not called a timeout late, this drive would have consumed more than 15 minutes. It was a coach's dream for the way you execute with a lead, Mark. It's a thing of beauty. An offensive coordinator, this is what he puts on the blackboard, the chalkboard. Every week, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the ball. We're going to kill the clock. We're going to run it down the field. Of play. We're going to run what? this no, play. This how play, this play say that again? And, and, you're, and you're sitting in the back room saying, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. It never happens. This never happens. Usually if you get like a 10 or 12 play drive for about seven or eight minutes, you're ecstatic. But to take the entire quarter, that just took the wind out of the sails of New Mexico. They never had a chance. After. It happens. 
I mean, it happens. It happens. Well, it happens. Well, it happens then. It happens with option offenses. I love this type of offense, Mark. This is how you ball control. It's exactly what you want to do. You have to understand something. We talk about Navy and Paul Johnson and this rushing offense, third in the nation coming in in terms of rushing offense. They weren't playing against a defense that hadn't stopped anybody. This was the eighth-ranked defense in college football against the run. That's the point about this offense. We talked about the multidimensional, give it to the fullback. You don't know who has the ball. You gotta understand, Aaron Polanco completed what, three passes? Three passes in the game, but it was for 100 yards. As a defense, you continually see the option. You continually worry about your assignment football. You see the give, you think the quarterback has it. You take one step wrong, and that wide receiver's behind you. If it's run right, you cannot stop the option, period. You know, the one play that sticks out in my mind was a play in the first half. It was a big gain for Navy. They ran a reverse off of the option, and you saw two Lobo defenders crashing down inside, chasing Polanco, who had hurt them, and he gave the little pitch, and the two guys slammed on the brakes, and on the wet turf, their feet flew out from under them. Big gain going the other way. New Mexico stayed on their heels, it seemed, the entire first and half. And that's the point about the option. Not in, just anybody can run the option. That's what separates Paul Johnson. I mean, there's been all kinds of people try to run the option in Army and Navy, and it didn't work. Why? Because you have to have somebody who understands setting up down the road what you want to get done. You mentioned it. You show the look time and time again. You see how the defenders react. Boom, you did a little reverse run right there. It's a huge game. That's the why Paul Johnson is a terrific football coach. And let's, one of these days, not Mark get ahead is going to believe in these that this option is outstanding. It's a, it's a wonderful offense for the Naval Academy. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. You know what made this offense work in this long? drive it's a smart intelligent senior quarterback Aaron Polanco because you know how difficult it is to run a six or eight play drive 26 plays 14 minutes oh, it's perfect execution that means right. everybody on offense took the right steps had the right hat placement had the right drive block held onto the ball didn't make mistakes converted third downs time after time again it's they a just like it because it's pure drive. football well I tell you the end result of it is that Navy has won 10 games in a season for just the second time in the history of the Naval Academy and the first time since 1905. Quite a season for Paul Johnson and the midshipmen. We are waiting for the Silicon Valley Football Classic. There has been a citywide power hit in San Jose. It took power away from our production truck. We are busily trying to get that rectified so we can bring you... If you're a Bears fan, there are two reasons you've got to watch NBC5. They have not started playing yet. There was a citywide power failure in San Jose that took power away from our production truck. They're trying to fix that right now, holding kick for a little while in hopes that we can bring you every play. I know it's a very exciting thing. Northern Illinois in a bowl game for the first time since 1983. Troy, which has a long and rich history in lower divisions, in Division II and one AA, making its first bowl appearance as a 1A member. We'll try to get you out to San Jose just as soon as we get all of the power problems problems straightened out. A game in which there is no power problem is the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl in San Diego. No power problem for Texas Tech. A big power problem for Jeff Tedford and Cal. Although in the early going, J.J. was Dino Mike. J.J. Arrington averaging about seven yards a carry. A little face mask action gave him a few more yards. And then Marshawn Lynch, the freshman, powering in. They got two great backs. They had two great backs. But this was sort of the story early on. Two wide receivers out. You see Aaron Rodgers go back to pass here. Beautiful throw right through the hands of Robert Jordan, picked off by Vincent Minks. That was a deal. Not on the same page with those wide receivers receivers was Aaron Rodgers. Jeff McCarthy hurt. Chase Lyman got hurt early in the season. Jordan is talented, but a true freshman couldn't hang on to that one. To 14-10, Cal lead. Sonny Cumbie, his receivers were hanging on to everything. Jarrett Hicks scoring the touchdown there. And then Torian Henderson, even on the ground. Cal was discombobulated, all messed up, Mayday. As you see, Sonny Cumbie now going to Joel Fulani, who would do the rest. And look at Sonny Cumbie, just sitting back in the pocket, no pressure, wide receivers running wide open all over the field. Outstanding game plan by Mike Leach in Texas Tech thus far in this game. Cal was giving up less than 14 points per game. With that touchdown, Texas Tech scored more points against California than anybody had scored against the sturdy Golden Bears this year. This defense had drawn comparisons to the famous Bear minimum defense of Cal in 1968, the best in school history up to this point, at least the bare minimum is regarded as that. It's a 15-point lead in a game that's going on over on ESPN right now. And the talk coming into the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl was how would Cal react mentally after being slipped by, past by Texas in the BCS standings? They were left out of their dream of the Rose Bowl, hoping to go there for the first time since 1959. Mark, as you watch this game, 
Do you see any indication that Cal wasn't ready, or is this just a good old-fashioned whipping so far by Texas Tech? It's a good old-fashioned thumping by Texas Tech. And you look at the beginning of this game, you look at Cal, they were able to establish the run early with J.J. Arrington. He had over 100 yards in the first half. But it was Sonny Cumbie throwing the football, throwing it in rhythm. The Tech, the, the, uh, the uh, defense for Cal never got to Sonny Cumbie in his football game. What they needed to do is they needed to bloody his nose. They needed to knock him down, but they didn't. The offensive line has done a magnificent job of keeping him upright, and they're just in rhythm right now throwing the football. It seems like he's at ease in the pocket. That's the one thing Cal can't do. They can't get pressure on him. All season long, we've watched Sonny Cumbie, right? Mm -hmm. When he's in a comfort zone, he's as good as there is. He really is. When you watch him play, the two teams that played well against him, Oklahoma and Texas A&M, what did they do? They never allowed him to feel comfortable. You watch this game, you got to see it about in the first quarter, midway through the first quarter, into the early in the second quarter, he was completely free. He knew exactly what he wanted to do, and Cal's defense, Mark was right, was completely on their heels. They weren't stopping anything. They weren't dictating anything. You have to understand, this is a Cal defense that was number four in the nation in rush defense had allowed only 13 points a game there's 14 minutes left to go in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter and they have 475 yards of total offense Texas Tech does so far they're not stopping anything you have to show different looks keep them off their heels and get pressure when Sonny Cumbie sits by himself all by himself back in the pocket I promise you he will tear any defense apart a couple of things from a big picture point of view here I think that that to say that the fact that Cal it looks as if barring a rally is going to lose this game to Texas Tech somehow validates them being left out of the Rose Bowl is no, not really no. fair. This is just a matchup game in which Texas Tech has the better matchups, at least they have thus far in this game tonight. But secondly, and I know this is a dangerous comparison, any impact on your thinking about how this might play in the FedEx Orange Bowl when we have another Big 12 against Pac-10 matchup? Does it have any bearing on your thinking about that game at all? It does a little bit after looking at this game. It <laughs> has to. Glad, glad to hear the honesty. To. Well, Good well, you, for you. Well, well, you look at the Big 12, particularly the Big 12 South. We said that that was the toughest division in the country. You look at the way that they played. Oklahoma has been so dominant the entire season, and they're balanced now. They've got a great running attack with Adrian Peterson. I look at this matchup and look at USC. The way that they had problems stopping the run against Cal, stopping the run the first half against Notre Dame. They haven't faced an animal like they're going to face in Oklahoma's <laughs> offensive line and running attack yet. Yeah, Adrian Peterson's only over 1,800 yards, a lot of those yards coming after contact. We are hoping to bring you the Silicon Valley Football Classic. As we've told you a couple of times, a power outage in the city of San Jose has taken out our production truck. We have got a little bit of power right now, enough to bring you Dave Ryan from San Jose, who's going to work the sidelines for us in that game with an update on the situation. What do we got, Dave? Well, Reese, I thought California was supposed to be nice and dry and warm this time of year, but not exactly. You talked about the power uh, issues, the generator problems that have arisen here in San Jose at Spartan Stadium. We're still a few minutes away from kickoff. And the bowl officials were going to try to have an 820 local kick. That's 1120 in the east and 1020 where both Alabama and Northern Illinois campuses are. They're going to try to get the kickoff going in the next few minutes. Our power generator is a few minutes away as well. Now, once we get this generator hooked up, I'm told by our production crew, we can get the game on the air to you in about 15 minutes after that. So we are hoping Crossing our fingers, as things stand right now, we should have live play-by-play -play action of this Silicon Valley Classic a few minutes into the first quarter. That's our hope right now. And with that generator getting here, hopefully things will uh, be able to kick off for our broadcast and this game pretty soon. All right, Dave, we'll keep our fingers crossed and we'll knock on wood. This is the site right now. What we can bring you is Spartan Stadium, something that we shot in San Jose, California. It will be Northern Illinois against Troy State. And just as soon as our production truck is ready to go, we'll get you out to Troy, Northern Illinois. As Dave said, they'll try to kick that off in just a few minutes, 820 local time, 20 minutes after 10 in the central time zone, which both Troy and DeKalb are. We started our bowl day in Charlotte with the Continental Tire Bowl. It will be a future matchup of ACC foes. Boston College and Tom O'Brien, this is much like going on the road, having you go to Charlotte, a sea of Carolina blue. It's a Tar Heel faithful, very excited about John Bunting's turnaround. And a turnaround for Boston College because they had their leader back. The guy that Tom O'Brien says means as much to this team as Doug Flutie did to his BC team, Paul Peterson, firing in the second quarter late in the first half and finding Joel Hazard. How about Joel Hazard up and over Yamo be there. That's given effort on this <laughs> office. Look at that. He's just one yard short, but he had some hops on that play. That was very impressive. What are you going to call on the goal line, Trevi? I'm going to look for that tight end. Dave Cachetta roll him right, come across his body, find a big fella in for the touchdown. BC ties it at 21. Now, Peterson had his team on the march up by three in the fourth quarter, third and one. He's trying to convert. He's a very mobile quarterback. 
a little boot again. Plans to keep it, but he drops the football as Tommy Davis tackles him. The left leg buckles under him, and Peterson suffers a broken leg on this play. Now, the injury's bad enough, but now means that BC is going to have to attempt a field goal as they carry Peterson off. The call by Tom O'Brien. Brilliant! The give to the kicker, Ryan Oliger. Oliger, who had really struggled with his foot, does some damage with his feet. He had had a field goal blocked. He missed an extra point, much to Peterson's delight, who turned out to be the MVP of the Continental Tire Bowl. Oliger went in for the touchdown and snapped Carolina's back. 37 to 24, the final. Boston College has now won five straight bowl games. And as terrific as Peterson was, and he was brilliant before he got hurt, no pun intended there, Andre Callender was also very strong. 174 yards on the ground. He gave BC a nice balanced attack. Callender, his rushing performance, among the best performances in all categories during bowl week. The top bowl performers this through the Emerald Bowl and at the passing yardage thing. I'm not sure that's going to stand up by the time old Sonny no, Cumbie no. gets through there at <laughs> Texas Tech. The calendar going for a buck 74 in Boston College's win in the Continental Tire Bowl. Daryl Hackney of UAB threw for 471, but it was not enough against Temi Chang in Hawaii because Jason Rivers of the Warriors catching 148 yards worth of Chang passes in Hawaii's victory over UAB out in the islands. Don't worry, be happy. Bobby McLaren of Navy with 17 tackles against New Mexico. That is actually a Bobby McFerrin reference. But Navy coming up with the victory over New Mexico. Let's talk a little bit about the Continental Tire Bowl. What does Boston College draw from this going into the ACC next year, if anything? Well, they know that they compete in the conference, and I think mm -hmm. they take confidence from that. They know they can play offensively and defensively. They put up points on the board. And the second half of this football game, they played the type of defense that they played in the beginning of the year when they were the leaders of the Big East. And I think it all comes down to their defensive end, Matthias Kiwanuka. He was out there today making plays all over the field. He had two sacks in his football game, but the six foot seven, 260-pound defensive end was all over Darian Durant. He could have easily had six or seven sacks, flushed him out of the pocket, put pressure on the quarterback the entire afternoon long. He was very impressive in this football. Game. We've talked guys all bowl season about which team really wanted to be there, which team would be motivated. I mean, if there's a team that really wasn't going to be motivated, what about Boston College? They come off that devastating loss. They were one win away from being in a BCS game, correct? Mm -hmm. Instead, they go down to play North Carolina. That's what I respect about Tom O'Brien. When you watch a Boston College football team, they max out, meaning he gets the most out of the talent that he has. We've talked about the options and all those kinds of ops and uh, uh, different offenses. How about this offense? You want a multiple offense that does everything. You have a quarterback that moves out of the pocket, throws on the run. They use the tight end. They ran for 230 yards a balanced offense that's why I like Tom O'Brien's offensive what are you checking your clock for? You, you no, I'm just scratching my head because I'm confused because the last segment you were talking about the option offense. It's the best offense out there. Nebraska had no, it. Navy runs it. Was it. The you best can't offense, stop it. Mark, the point is this. Whatever offense you're going to run, you need to do it right. Navy does it right. And what I'm trying to point out is this multiple offense of Boston College does it right as well. Very fundamentally sound, and they attack you in a lot of different ways. Okay, I got it now. Now, both of the offenses work quite well. Execution, execution, what do you think? execution. I think it is good to have a balanced offense. You know what I really think? What? I believe that it depends on where you are, the school where you are, and what kind of talent right. you can recruit, what, what type of offense, have. what kind of attack you ought to run. At a service academy, I think the option is a, is a very good idea. Do you think a top-level talent school could not run the option and win a national championship? No, I think that they absolutely could if they committed to it. The problem would be recruiting. Okay. Because there are kids who don't want to play in the option offense because they're afraid they can't get to the next I understand level. I'll buy as a result. That. Well, of course, on New Year's Eve, we're going to have an entire plate full of bowl games for you, highlighted by the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. That game is going to be a top 10 matchup. Boise State, owning the nation's longest winning streak, ran the table in the regular season 11 0, but. They take on a Louisville team that has scored 55 points in five consecutive games. Louisville has just been a machine on offense. Well, look at the explosive running of Eric Shelton, averaging 6.7 yards a carry. The big fellow is about 255 pounds here against Miami. Still has the speed, though, Mark, to get down the sideline. This power, the speed, the vision, once again here, breaking tackles. And when you establish a run, what happens, Mark? 
You can throw the football. You can throw the football. You can throw <laughs> the football if you have an accurate quarterback. Should Stephon LaFleur is completing 74% of his passes. I'm telling you, Mark thinks the offensive line is the most important. Yes. I say if you establish that run, you can do that right there. A balanced offense, a pro-style offense. That's what Louisville has, and that's why they're so difficult to stop. And not only that, how about their defense? Robert McKinnon, the, the, the linebacker, leads the team in tackles, done an outstanding job. You know, you talk about both of these offenses, and they're very high scoring, but somebody's got to play defense. I think if you look at Louisville, they have the better defense. And if Louisville can go in this football game and get at least three stops a series in the first half and second half, I think the game's over. I think for Boise State, this is their biggest challenge of the season. They haven't faced a big physical defense like the Louisville defense. This is going to be a test for their offense. And the other thing that's a test for Boise State is is playing away from home. They had to win on a late field goal when they went on the road to Tulsa and Skelly Stadium. Yep. They had to go into double overtime against the San Jose State team that really, frankly, wasn't very good this year. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how they do away from the good crowd there in Boise and against what will probably be a pro Louisville crowd not too far away in Memphis in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. And I mentioned San Jose. We've got some problems in San Jose right now. There was a citywide power outage in San Jose. It took out our production truck for the Silicon Valley Football Classic. That's Northern Illinois against Troy. They have not kicked off yet. We're trying to rectify our power problems in the truck and bring you the game shortly. San Jose is the capital of Silicon Valley, the world center for technology innovation. Our entrepreneurial spirit has changed the world. San Jose also is recognized as one of America's most livable cities. We're the 11th largest city in the nation with wonderful neighborhoods, great weather, and beautiful vistas. And year after year, San Jose is the safest big city in America. Find your way to San Jose, a great city to live, work, and play. Right now, we have to get to our traffic report. Let's do that. How about that traffic report? In the city of San Jose has wreaked havoc with our production truck as we're trying to televise the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Troy State getting set to take on Northern Illinois. When we get the power restored, Pam Ward and Mike Tomsack will have the call for us. Pam's got an update on what's going on in San Jose. Welcome to the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Troy taking on Northern Illinois as we continue to work out some technical problems. Pam Ward joined by Mike Tomzak and Dave Ryan. Troy with the football first. D.T. McDowell threw his first pass incomplete, so it's now second and ten for the Trojans. DeWitt Betterson, the all-time leading rusher in Troy football history, gets the carry and picks up about seven yards on first down. Well, DeWitt Betterson is the guy they want to feature all evening tonight. Multiple tight end offense, three tight ends in the game. But they air it out on the first play of the game. Both Troy and Northern Illinois. Big third down play for the Tro Trojans. Both Troy and Northern Illinois run oriented football teams. Third and two. Betterson got eight yards on that last carry. And McDowell goes right back to his star player. There's a lot of running room, and he gets the first down before he has popped out of bounds around the 44-yard line. So a first down for Betterson. Well, Northern Illinois is not going to do too much defensively. They're going to line up in a 4-3 defense and allow their linebackers to flow, play two deep coverage in the secondary, and force with the safeties. But they better get ahead on DeWitt Betterson early because he's got some pretty good quicks. 14 yards for Betterson on that carry, so it's now first and 10 from the 44. Tr Troy coming in, the second place team in the Sun Belt Conference. First time the Sun Belt has gotten more than one team to a bowl game. North Texas went to the New Orleans Bowl where they lost to Southern Mississippi. And Betterson yet again, this time he only gets a couple of yards as he tests the right side of his offensive line. Well, Troy University has fumbled the ball 22 times this year and only lost 10 of them. And the conditions on the field are extremely wet. The footing is somewhat bad at best. I just think they're going to concentrate on the ground game, try to get some field position because they have an outstanding defense. So now second and seven. Betterson picking up three more yards. Betterson has 13 career 100-yard games. Six of them happened this season. Three receivers in. Jermaine Richardson now the running back. Fake to him, and McDowell takes it himself. The quarterback goes for a couple of yards. Quince Holman makes the stop 
for the Huskies. And D.T. McDowell is a quarterback who also was a great baseball player. In fact, was drafted in the 20th round by the Angels and played with them in the Summer League in Mesa, but really at the last minute decided to come back and play football. Well, they didn't know until August that they're going to have him out of services. But when he did come there, he developed pretty quickly. Took a while to get to know the playbook, but midway through the season, they put him in to start against LSU. And they barely lost LSU. LSU had to come from behind to beat Troy by three. Now third and five, just short of midfield. And McDowell, under pressure. Brian Atkinson can't get to him. And there's the athleticism of D.T. McDowell, who turns a sack into a probable first down. Well, Brian Atkinson, number 38, the leader, the captain for the Huskies, had him in his grasp, but you got to wrap him. Very slippery quarterback, elusive speed. Had a big loss, potentially, for the Huskies, but McDowell turned into a huge gain. Atkinson with five sacks on the season, the unquestioned leader of this football team, a six foot one, 235-pound senior from Chicago, and they come out to measure. Yeah, from Frenger High School in Chicago, the public league school. He played outside linebacker last year. Atkinson made all-MAC conference, moved into middle linebacker this year. Again, repeated as an all-conference performer. And like you said, Bam, he makes everything go for their defense. Number 38, Brian Atkinson. So first and 10 now from the 46 of Northern Illinois. This is the opening drive of the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Troy, the team that beat Missouri on ESPN earlier this season. McDowell, a flag is down, and he's going deep for Jason Samples, who makes a tremendous catch. Samples is stopped at the one-yard line, but again, a penalty flag is down at the line of scrimmage. That's going to stand at offsides in the defense. A fundamental mistake by the Huskies early in this game. Turns in a tremendous throw by D.T. McDowell and Jason Samples, who split two deep defenders right through the middle of the field. Ray Smith and Rob Lee on the tackle for the Huskies. But tremendous throw by D.T. McDowell. Very impressive in these field conditions the way they are. And what a catch by Samples, too, to go the full layout and to bring that in. That was a 45-yard gain. So first and goal from the one. You know, a team that features the pass a lot, Pam, or features the run a lot, has come out throwing the football deep and often. So crossing them up just a little bit. First and goal from the one. Betterson tries to take it in the extra yard, but he has stopped a couple of inches short. Brian Atkinson and a fumble. The ball is loose, according to Northern Illinois. But it looks like the officials are spotting it down, and Troy will hold on to the football. So Atkinson makes the stop on Betterson. Now second and goal from inside the one. You know, for Troy's first appearance in a bowl game, you might think a young freshman quarterback might have some nerve issues out there in the field, but he has showed no signs whatsoever. Elusive in the running game, strong arm freshman quarterback, and he had a 92-mile-an-hour fastball, I think, in baseball. And playing center field in the Angels organization, hit... All right, so we apologize for our technical difficulties there. We've lost our audio signal. In case you just happen to be joining us, there was a citywide power outage in San Jose, which knocked out power from our production truck. That's why you're seeing the one camera angle of the Troy Northern Illinois game in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Troy just took the ball down the field and scored a touchdown to go up on Northern Illinois. As soon as we get our power problems and our audio problems rectified, we'll get you back out to San Jose for that game. You know, one intriguing or interesting aspect, I guess, about this and one of the stories that you don't hear a lot about during bowl week one of the players for Troy is a young man by the name of Ronald Harper he's a linebacker for them his brother Roman Harper is a safety at Alabama 
where their parents wanted to be able to see both bowl games. So the Harpers are in San Jose right now watching Ronald play against Northern Illinois. They're going to try to stay through the third quarter and then catch a red-eye flight back to Nashville in time for the noon Eastern kickoff tomorrow in the Music City Bowl, the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl with Alabama and Minnesota. That's the dedication the parents have to show on bowl week as well. So they won't get to see three quarters maybe, maybe about maybe a half. Two and a half, so the kickoff was pushed them. back a little, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, but yeah. that's fair. You split it up between both sons. You're dedicated to your sons, obviously, but you also have to love a lot of football to do that. You have to be dedicated to the game. <laughs> you also have to be dedicated to not getting a lot of sleep unless you can sleep on the plane. That's true. So the Harpers hopefully will be able to have safe travels there. Troy made the extra point after driving down and scoring a touchdown against Northern Illinois. And the Trojans, if you're not familiar with the university, it's located down in South Alabama. They have a rich football history in Division II and in 1AA. They've moved up to 1A and playing in their first bowl game, and they have a lead on the Huskies out of the MAC. We'll try to get all of our technical difficulties straightened out and get you back out to San Jose for further coverage of Troy and Northern Illinois. We'll continue with our coverage. Capital One Bowl week rolls on after this. technical difficulties in our coverage of the Silicon Valley Football Classic out in San Jose, Northern Illinois, and Troy. Troy's gone on top in that game 7-0. Trying to get you back out there in just a little bit. Game going on over on ESPN. Eagerly anticipated the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl and Mike Leach's Texas Tech Red Raiders. They have been an offensive machine. Sonny Cumbie's thrown for 463 yards. I think that just puts him eight away from the best passing yardage performance of bowl week. The way Sonny pitches that thing around, he'll probably get there. And this has just been a dismantling of what has been a very good Golden Bear defense during the regular season. And I think for Mike Leach and this Texas Tech team, what a great job this season taking the next step. We win this game. They're now 8-4. and four. They had been to bowl games in the past, maybe the Alamo or Houston. Now the Holiday Bowl to beat the number four ranked team, assuming they hold on. A huge win for Mike Leach and Texas Tech. Jeff Tedford has to be very, very frustrated with his defense because they've got no answer for the Texas Tech offense. They can't get the quarterback, Sonny Cumbie. They can't cover the receivers on the outside or the inside. This is one of those games where you, you just throw caution to the wind. You can't do anything right defensively. There's All been right. a lot of people who couldn't figure out Texas Tech. That's sort of <laughs> that, that seems to be a common denominator when you go against Leach a lot of times if you're not called Oklahoma. They seem to yes. figure out a lot of teams. We believe we have our technical difficulties solved now, ready to get you out to San Jose. Troy and Northern Illinois, Pam Ward and Mike Tomsack have the call of the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Welcome back to the Silicon Valley Classic. A three and out for the Northern Illinois offense. Leotis McKelvin, who has two touchdowns on punt returns this season, stopped in his tracks in the very first punt. Albert Hansborough coming up to make the stop. Northern Illinois trailing Troy seven to nothing here with just under nine minutes to go in the first quarter. We've had some technical problems and hope to have full power back within about 15 minutes as both of these teams ball for Troy its first ever bowl game Northern Illinois playing in its first bowl game since 1983 Pam Ward joined by Mike Tomzak and Dave Ryan and a crew that's working very hard to to get everything back up we've had a ton of rain here in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area we're in the South Bay right now the rain for now has let up a little bit and Troy looked very impressive on its very first drive. They went 78 yards and only nine plays, capped it off with the DT McDowell one yard touchdown run. And now they have the ball for the second time tonight. We have an ACC officiating crew. Well, Coach Jeff Blakeney, he, he's pretty surprised his team came out Took the opening drive, went down the field. A, like we said earlier, it's a defensive-minded team. Jeff Blakeney in his 14th year at Troy University. and I'm sorry, Larry, Larry Blakeney. It's been his 14th year at Troy University. A little confusion there about whether or not a timeout was called, and a, apparently one was not called. So first and 10 from the 27 for the Troy Trojans. Troy in its fourth year as a Division 1A team, third year as a full-time member, and first year in the Sun Belt. Betterson 
huge hole on the left side of his line, and he squishes through to pick up about 12 yards. Rob Lee finally makes a stop, but Betterson showing why he's had so much success, their all-time leading rusher. Well, Betterson obviously has that explosive speed once he gets into the secondary and the second tier of the defensive front. His elusiveness is pretty good. I think the advantage goes to the running back in this game because they know where they're cutting, they know where the hole is, and they know the snap count. And the offensive line is doing a good job. It's a veteran offensive line that's done a nice job for Betterson all year long. 14 more yards for Betterson. Now first and 10 from the 41 for Troy. Northern Illinois has yet to stop Betterson as he picks up about four more. Betterson stopped by Ray Smith, a junior from Crown Point, Indiana, for the Huskies. Well, a team has a lead early in the game, they pretty much have things in control. This team is pretty much a ball control, field position type of offense. But right now, with his lead, they could do anything they want. They have a quarterback that's pretty elusive, has a strong arm, look for a little rollout pass or some type of play action here, because the running game's going very well. Second and five for the Trojans. McDowell rolling. Nothing but green in front of him, and McDowell runs for the first down and is finally tackled down around the 42-yard line by Alva Hansbro, but McDowell picks up 12 yards. Pam, he does not look like a true freshman out there. Very heady quarterback, sees the field very well, and he just matured into this role. After the sixth game of the season, he saw some action early, but it wasn't until that LSU game that he really came of age and went down there to a tough environment and only lost by four points and played pretty well. This is his sixth straight start. He did come in when they played at LSU. They lost that game 24 to 20, as Mike mentioned, and had LSU, they were up on LSU until the Tigers came back late. And that game was in Baton Rouge. Talk about poise under pressure. Your first collegiate start as a true freshman is in Baton Rouge. Yeah, and a guy that played baseball, I think he's got a lot more maturity under his belt because he's been out of the environment, had to grow up fast playing baseball. Now he's gonna throw it. He's got a heck of an arm going for samples again. What an adjustment by Samples. He does not come up with it as he was covered by Rob Lee, but Samples has shown some talent. Well, we visited both those guys, Samples and McDowell, yesterday, and both of those guys seem to be on the same page. We asked him if a young quarterback like this has any nerves, but he's got nerves of steel. And he's shown every bit of that poise in the pocket. He's thrown every ball, great tight spiral, and you think quarterbacks in this type of environment and this setting are going to have problems throwing the football, but I've seen nothing to that effect at all. Second and ten now. Little play action. Going right back to Samples, who turns, and that's a great throw by McDowell as he threw the ball before Samples made his final break. First down. We talked to Mark Fleetwood, the offensive coordinator, and he would like to get McDowell not only on the perimeter, but get him in a groove throwing the football earlier. And his number one target, Jason Samples. Again, the advantage goes to the offense because the receiver knows when he's come out of his break. And the line protection and the line play so far early in this game has been all Troy Trojans. So another first down for Samples, who himself was a high school quarterback. He's a senior. And DT McDowell said that Samples is kind of like a short Randy Moss because he can go up and, and get the football. Adjusts very well in the air. First and 10 from the 26. Betterson the tailback. But now they go on the end around and looking to throw it as Samples into the end zone. And it's just tipped away at the last second as they were looking for Joe Munson, the tight end. But it was flicked away by Lionel Hickenbottom. Lionel, who goes by the nickname Boogie. Everybody calls him Boogie, and Boogie made a heck of a play. Yeah, he was a pretty good dancer, I guess, at Roberson High School. And the girls and the guys like his feet, and they got that Boogie name to him. Nice recovery in that play, but I love that call in this environment. It's a slippery field. You got the advantage, everything going your way. And Jason Samples, that's his 10th attempt in his career as a wide receiver, okay. throwing the ball. He threw it pretty well. On with gloves on his hand and a wet football. But I like that call. Tried to keep Northern Illinois defense on their heels. Right now, Northern Illinois needs to come up with a stop here on second down. 
Samples, in fact, that was the fourth pass he has thrown this season. Now two for four, he does have a touchdown through a 27-yard touchdown in the upset win over Missouri in the second week of the season. Well, now, he, has three, he has three career touchdown passes. Samples does almost as many as the quarterback, D.T. <laughs> McDowell. That's right, D.T. coming in with four touchdowns this season against three picks. Second and 10 from the 26. McDowell hands it off to Betterson, who stands behind his blocker, Dawkins, the fullback, and picks up about three. Alva Hansborough making yet another tackle. Well, their offensive line's doing a great job, and this running attack is only doing tremendous things for their defense. The field position games can become very vital with the conditions on the field. But across the board, the offensive line is taking it to the Northern Illinois Huskies. It's up to the Huskies to get a stop here on third down. Big third and seven coming up. Ball on the 23-yard line, still in the first quarter. Jermaine Richardson in the backfield with Dawkins. McDowell flicks it off to Richardson, and he runs for the first down and the touchdown. Troy, two possessions and two scores. Well, they had great blocks on that screen play. I like to call in these conditions, Lee Milner, the center, number 59, Junior Lusant, the fine offensive guard, number 79, and was out there leading the way for Jeremy Richardson. But again, this offense of Troy, very explosive, and they come out here with the right mindset to take it to the Huskies. So Richardson with the touchdown catch, his second TD catch of the season. And Greg Wibbs comes in, and the Troy Trojans very impressively up 14 to nothing in the first quarter in San Jose. Hi, I'd like to redeem my credit card. Come Valley Football Classic. The good news is we believe we have everything all worked out. We're going to get you back out to San Jose in just a couple of minutes. Want to get you up to date on some of the other games going on on this next to the last day of 2004. A game going on over on ESPN. It has been an impressive, a virtuoso offensive performance, if you will, by Texas Tech. They are hammering number four Cal, 38-24, inside three minutes to go. Trev, do you think Mike Leach will start running the ball to run the clock out? No, well, I don't think <laughs> He can. I mean, you got Sonny Cumbie, 59 <laughs> passes, almost 500 yards passing against this good Cal defense, or what we thought was a good Cal defense. Those 59 passes, a Holiday Bowl record. Think of all the guys who played there, Bosco, Young, Applewhite, this and the Emerald Bowl. Navy winning 10 games in a season for the first time since 1905. Aaron Polanco runs for three touchdowns and passes for another one for the midshipmen. And the Continental Tire Bowl, Boston College goes down to Charlotte. Paul Peterson breaks his leg late in this game. Got 174 yards rushing from Andre Callender. A fake field goal that was a stroke of brilliance by Tom O'Brien. 37-24. Boston College beats North Carolina and wins its fifth straight bowl game. Troy is playing in his first bowl game and no sign of nerves so far. They're up on Northern Illinois. Pam Ward and Mike Tomczak have the call. All right, Reese, and you're absolutely right. Troy has been perfect so far. They have a 78-yard touchdown drive and a 73-yard touchdown drive. And they lead Northern Illinois 14 to nothing. Pam Ward joined by Mike Tomczak and Dave Ryan at the Silicon Valley Football Classic. And Northern Illinois in its first bowl game since 1983. You might recall they won 10 games last year, Mike, but uh, they did not get a bowl bid. No, they did. Coach Joe Novak told us that the team last year was pretty darn good, but unfortunately it didn't work in his favor, and this year going to take advantage of the opportunity. And that pass is completed. Halby finds Marcus Perez, the true freshman, who will stop just short of midfield. That's a big 23-yard gain for the Huskies. Well, the Huskies definitely needed a big play to change the momentum, get some momentum back in their side because they've been shocked. Josh Holliday, senior quarterback, three-year starter. It's out in the perimeter. Great block by the running back. Wolf on the outside, but the young freshman, Marcus Perez, does a nice job getting behind the corner. Perez making the start today because Chaton Powers was late for practice last week, so Powers will not play until the second quarter. Perez getting the start and a big 23-yard gain. First down at midfield for the Huskies. 
Garrett Wolf, a terrific running back for Northern Illinois, shows the speed. Garrett Wolf, touchdown. 50 yards and the score. That's exactly what Northern Illinois wanted to do is respond to the first two touchdowns that Troy was able to put up in the boards. Josh Hall did a good job in that first pass completion, but it's all Garrett Wolf on the left side. Get their big all, all American left or center. Brian Vanneker freezed away for Wolf. He gets in the end zone and gets the Huskies back in their feet and a little jump in their step. Garrett Wolf is a terrific running back, over 1,500 yards on the ground this season. Chris Mendick with the extra point, and Garrett Wolf, who is listed as 5'7, is faster than any Husky you'll ever want to see. Wolf takes it 50 yards. It's now 14-7. On Sunday, Garrett Wolf taking a break. He just went 50 yards for the touchdown. Northern Illinois down 14-7 now to Troy, which got off to a very fast start in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. And we welcome you to San Jose, Pam. We're joined here by Mike Tomczak. Troy has never been to a bowl game before tonight, but certainly no opening day jitters for them. Exactly. You didn't see that in, in any of their appearance here today. The first two drives get on the field. E.T. McDowell, the true freshman quarterback, orchestrated nicely, throwing the ball very effectively in these tough conditions. But their running game is pretty stout, but Northern Illinois finally matched with a touchdown run by Wolf. We've got two very good running backs, and DeWitt Betterson and Wolf, as Leotis McKelvin takes the kickoff and to stop just short of the 30-yard line. Let's go back and look at that nifty run by Wolf, 50 yards. The center does a great job. Brian Vanneker getting out in space, but it's all Wolf from that point. He has great vision. He tucks that ball real tight to his body. This team, Northern Illinois, does not turn the football over much. And Troy's defense, very opportunistic turnover team. They've had 26 interceptions and a 10 fumble recoveries this year, and they've done a tremendous job all season long, but Wolf holds that ball real, real tight like he's got. Not only a loaf of bread, but some, some honey behind it. So Wolf with the touchdown. That's a guy who had over 300 yards in the season, the regular season closer against Eastern Michigan. Troy up 14 to seven, and with the football. They're running back, Betterson only gets a yard maybe as he is clogged up in the middle of the line. Quince Holman with his second tackle of the night. Well, both these teams, Pam, have played big ball games throughout the whole season. Troy's been down to LSU, Marshall, and Northern Illinois opened up with Maryland. They fell short there, but they had a big victory against Bowling Green early in the season. So these two teams are very familiar with, with settings and bowl, not, not so much bowl appearances, but playing big-time football on national TV. Northern Illinois, one of five teams from the MAC to go to a bowl game this season. Troy out of the Sun Belt. Second and nine. McDowell looking for samples, but he's well covered, so McDowell takes off and picks up about four yards. We pick up the third member of our team, Dave Ryan. All right, Pam, thanks so much. Big momentum change here on the Husky sideline after that long 50-yard touchdown run from Garrett Wolf. The guys on the Husky sideline here were hanging their heads, looked like they were a little bit down until Wolf got them going. And guys, he ran right by me on the sideline. You want to talk about electrifying breakaway speed, separation speed. He left those Troy tacklers in the dust like they weren't even moving. Mike, these guys are really fast. Garrett Wolf can move. I think there's a lot of speed in that field under these conditions. Garrett Wolf, 4 4 7, 40 man. But even Betterson's a 4 5 guy. So you got two stout running backs. Troy, 3 for 3 on third downs. McDowell escapes and then throws it. It's picked off. Intercepted by Boogie Hickenbottom. And Northern Illinois has really turned this game around. McDowell with an ill conceived pass. And Hickenbottom, Hickenbottom comes up with his fifth interception of the season. Well, the all-MAC performer, number 56, Travis Moore, forced that play. And D.T. McDowell would love to have that pass back to him. But the bootleg fake is a very elusive quarterback. And once he got back inside, never throw late over the middle of the field. And Hickenbottom was there to take it away from him. Great pressure, Jason Hutton. But Hickenbottom coming up with the interception. Field position is great for Northern Illinois. They're on the 28th when we return. Brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? 
the 270 horsepower Acura TL, a higher form of performance, and Wendy's new combo choices. Wendy's, it's better here. Well, welcome back to San Jose, Northern Illinois, coming up with an interception by Lionel Higginbottom, setting him up on the 28-yard line of Troy. Troy, one of the best defenses in all of football. Eighth in the nation, giving up only 15 points a game. Here's Garrett Wolf. He coughs it up, but the ball goes out of bounds. Northern Illinois will hold on to it. Let's take a look now at the interception by Higginbottom, Mike. Well, good pursuit by Northern Illinois defense. We got Martin Wilson, number 90, that forces McDowell up inside, but here comes Travis Moore, number 56, with a blow to the head. It should have been a call. Face mask or roughing the quarterback. I know he's an elusive quarterback, but the referee's got to do a better job protecting that young quarterback. So now, second and eight from the 26-yard line. Wolf gets it. And he kind of hides a little bit behind all those big guys, and then he squirts out. Freeman White makes the stop. That's what makes him so effective, Pam. Garrett Wolf just hides behind that massive offensive line. He just shuffles a little bit to his left and hits the seam up inside, gets real skinny, and then burst out of there. It's gonna be tough for these linebackers for Troy to find him. But they were very fortunate that last, second to last play, getting that fumble out of bounds. And he doesn't fumble that much. They've only had seven fumbles. This team only lost one offensively. And now eight with one lost. Albee throwing it to his big play receiver, Dan Sheldon. And Sheldon, who was nicknamed Seabiscuit by P.J. Fleck, who used to play at Northern Illinois, because you know you take a look at Sheldon, physically not that imposing, but he's, he's so dangerous. Well, Sheldon has just big playability and big speed, 23.6 yards per catch. And here's a big play right in the sideline. Nice job in the protection of pocket, and even better job by Haldy delivering a perfect strike to Sheldon on the left side of the field. So he picks up eight yards. Now first and goal from the six for the Huskies. They were down 14 to nothing, and they're six yards away from tying it up. Wolf spinning away from a tackler, and then is stopped just short of the goal line. Cedric Sullivan on the stop. The Wolf so quick. He is, he is so quick, Pam. What they do in Northern Illinois offensively, they get two tight ends in the game, two receivers and one back, and they get a balanced front. They make the defense balance up, and they just run away from the strong safety in that zone stretch play, and Wolf just picks his hole and darts for the end zone. And Wolf really getting a break or getting into the starting lineup when A.J. Harris was hurt in the first half against Bowling Green when those two teams played on the 24th of September, and all Wolf did was get 200 yards in the second half. Now second and goal and another touchdown. Holdy keeps it, the quarterback takes it in, and Northern Illinois has fought back bravely from 14-0 down. Not only did they get shocked initially in the first quarter, early in the first quarter, but they come back to respond, getting a turnover for themselves and capitalizing, taking it in. Josh Holdy, the senior, the quarterback snake, just ducks behind his all-mac, all-center, Brian Vanneker. And the Huskies are back in this ball game pretty quickly. Chris Nednick in to add the extra point. And after falling behind 14 to nothing, Troy scoring on its first two possessions. Northern Illinois has come back. The 50-yard touchdown run by Garrett Wolf, and then the interception setting up Haldy's one-yard quarterback sneak. We are all tied up, Northern Illinois and Troy, as we come back to the Silicon Valley Classic in San Jose. The 2005 NCAA win to ESPN's Capital One Bowl win. That is Christmas in the Park, a very beautiful setup, about 450 Christmas trees and a lot of animated settings that the uh, city of San Jose has put on now for several years. Right in downtown San Jose, really a very spectacular holiday setting. It will be up, I believe, until January 3rd. So uh, still, you know, they even have like fake snow there because obviously there's no snow in San Jose. A lot of rain, but the rain has subsided here as Troy tied up now with Northern Illinois at 14 apiece. 
It's amazing on both sidelines. Northern Illinois people are all fired up, and Troy's waiting for their next opportunity. But Kelvin gets the kickoff, and he is stopped down around the 23-yard line. As the field here is, as, as one might expect, pretty soggy. This is where San Jose State plays its football games, but this, the Bay Area, and actually all of California has really been socked with a lot of rain over the last week. I know there were, there were places a little bit north of here that got six inches in one day. A lot of rain, and this uh, field a little bit soggy, but uh, actually in pretty good shape considering the amount of rain we've gotten. They always talk about slippery fields and great athletes never slip on slippery fields and with the big offensive linemen, you never see these guys fall that much because they got those big cleats and big bodies to hold them in place. First and 10 now for Troy. We'll see how McDowell responds. He threw his fourth interception of the season on his last pass. And there's slippage as Betterson slipped in the backfield and then ran into his quarterback and they lose a couple of yards as we send you back to Reese Davis. All right, Pam, and putting a bow on the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, Sonny Cumbie and Texas Tech just dismantled number four, Cal. Cumbie going up top to Trey Haverty unofficially. Cumbie throws for 520 yards, fifth quarterback to do that in a bowl game. Torrey and Henderson doing it on the ground. Texas Tech rolls 45-31. Well, I tell you, Reese, I'm shocked by that. Texas Tech with that, that kind of run-and-shoot offense, but California disappointed that they did not get to the Rose Bowl. I thought they should have gone over Texas, but, uh, boy, Texas Tech, Mike Leach and company with that offense dismantle them. McDowell, what an arm going for James Earl Cray, and that is incomplete. Rob Lee and Lionel Hickenbottom on the coverage. Well, Northern Illinois defensive backs are very self-conscious of strength in the arm by D.T. McDowell. Nice job by Rob Lee, running stride for stride and getting his left hand in there at the end, knocking it out of his grasp. That's what Northern Illinois, Northern Illinois needs to do to stop the momentum by Troy because McDowell has a super strong arm. Joe Novak, now in his ninth season at Northern Illinois, he survived a 23-game losing streak. When he first came aboard, they won three games in his first three seasons. And you have to give all the credit in the world for the patience of the administration at Northern Illinois. They stuck with him, and it's paid off. McDowell, nowhere to go, and he throws it away as he was pressured again up the middle. Robert Orache with the pressure. Larry Blakeney, 14th season as a Troy head coach. He has seen them through a lot. They were Division II his first year, then Division I AA, where they made the playoffs nine of 10 years. They've been Division I A since 2001. And here's a guy who was absolutely, I would say, revered by his staff. Oh, it certainly is, and they just respect the heck out of him. And he's taught many lessons to a lot of these coaches and players. Just a wonderful human being to be around. Both these coaches, Coach Novak, high character individual, old school kind of coach. Dan Sheldon, one of the best punt returners in the country, gets the Thomas Olstead punt, 36 yards on the punt, and Sheldon goes down right away. A couple years ago, Sheldon was number one in the country as a punt returner, stands seventh in the country this year and is a terrific threat as a wide receiver. The first quarter has come to an end, a very entertaining one. Troy and Northern Illinois knotted up at 14 apiece. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. Hello? It's happening again. I don't believe it. To track down an ancient evil, they have been trained to hunt it. We have a dino. Equipped to kill it. It's just the beginning. Now, they just have to survive it. Alone in the dark. Rated R. In theaters January 28th. Let's talk about better. When someone says something's better, it's usually just their opinion. So if you suffer from acid reflux disease, frequent heartburn, and I told you prescription Nexium heals acid-related damage in the esophagus better. You'd want proof. And now, your doctor has that proof. Recent medical studies prove Nexium heals that damage better than the other leading prescription medicine. No wonder they call Nexium the healing purple pill. This is big news, so call your doctor today.
and ask if Nexium is right for you. Because if left untreated, the damage could get worse. Other serious stomach conditions may still exist. The most common side effects of Nexium are headache, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Hey, with Nexium, you don't just feel better, you are better. And better is better. For a free trial offer for Nexium, visit us at purplepill.com or call 1 800 4 Nexium. When my hunger's big, there's nothing like a double QPC. Thank you. Gracias. Greetings from San Jose, the capital of high-tech innovation and the home of the Silicon Valley Football Classic. I'm Mayor Ron Gonzalez. And I'm Dan Fenton, President and CEO of the San Jose Convention and Visitors Bureau. On behalf of San Jose, we are thrilled to have Northern Illinois and Troy University competing in the fifth annual Silicon Valley Football Classic presented by Movie Gallery. San Jose football fans and community partners like HP are proud to host what has become a national sporting event and a popular local holiday tradition. Enjoy the game. And this is indeed the Silicon Valley Football Classic here in San Jose. Fresno State had been a frequent visitor until this season. Actually has WAC and Pac-10 tie-ins, but neither conference got enough teams bowl eligible. And Troy and Northern Illinois, the beneficiaries of two spots that opened up, and both teams thrilled to be here as Garrett Wolf goes down in the arms of Robbie Farmer. One thing that Joe Novak told us was that certainly with these two teams, they're not bowl spoiled. You're not going to have a couple of teams come in here and take anything for granted. They've had a terrific time. And for a lot of the kids, particularly on Troy, they've never been to California. They were kind of wide eyed, excited about seeing the Golden Gate Bridge and spending time in San Francisco. So it's really nice and refreshing. They are they are really, really excited to be here. Baldy on second down, flips it out, completes it to Brad Sieslak. His tight end and the big lumbering tight end loses his hat as he was just smacked by linebacker Bernard Davis. But that's a 17 yard gain for the tight end. Boy, did Bernard Davis give him a whack. Knocked the ear pads out, chin strap off. But nice call, throw back to Suslek. Gets up the sideline with his lineman in front. But here comes that pop. That's a, that's a broken jaw hit. Not only did the ear pad come out, his mouthpiece came out. That's one of those late night punches that you don't want to expect. You gotta expect the unexpected here in this football game. Seaslack's 30th catch of the season, his second on the team to Sheldon and catches. As Chaton Powers has now checked in at receiver. Baldy going up top for Sam Hurd. He goes down. The Northern Illinois fans want an interference call, but none coming as uh, he got tangled up a little bit with Freeman White. Well, good no call. Freeman White had great coverage in that play, and all Josh Hawley wanted to do is just give his receiver a chance to run underneath the pass. He aired it out pretty good. Both these quarterbacks, Pam, have done a nice job throwing the football in these difficult conditions. And as you say that, Mike, the rain has started up again here. That was Hawley's first incompletion, now four or five for 65 yards. And Hawley, a very impressive young man, graduated a couple of weeks ago, a 3.9 cumulative GPA in accounting. Very bright. And a very mature quarterback hands it off to Wolf, and Garrett can't turn the corner, picks up about a yard. Robbie Farmer coming up to make the stop. Well, nice pursuit by Robbie Farmer and also Demarcus Ware on the backside. They string a play out and don't allow Wolf to cut up inside. Troy defense has been stout throughout the whole season, holding opponents under 100 yards rushing. And that front defensive four, the front interior defensive line, they rotate him in and out of the game, keep him fresh. Do a nice job in the pursuits. As you see the particulars on Haldy, he had an internship lined up with an accountant's firm in Chicago, but has put that on hold because he's going to train. He's been invited to the NFL Combines and wants to give it a shot. Third down, Haldy escaping, buying time, and wisely throws it away. There's that scholar athlete coming into play as he made the correct play by getting rid of it. He was pursued by Arthur Adams. Did a nice job. He knew he didn't have anybody downfield open. He preserved the ball, threw it out of bounds. But at the end of the play, he does take a big hit. 
But Josh Holiday, I know he's pumped up, very focused in this game. A lot of these seniors, fifth-year seniors and seniors, have never had an opportunity to go to a bowl game. It's been 21 years since Northern Illinois had an opportunity to play in a bowl game. And I'm sure these guys are going to give their very best throughout the whole evening. Anthony Gallagher in for his second punt. Leotis McKelvin waits. You see he has a couple of touchdowns on punt returns this season. Very high kick. And it just flops in the wet grass around the 13-yard line. And that is where Troy will take over. Troy and Northern Illinois tied up at 14 apiece as we play in the rain at the Silicon Valley Football Classic. that can't get enough. Movie Gallery Playoffs. It has more standard safety features than any SUV in its class. It is the only small SUV to earn the highest possible ratings of all crash tests by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. It has been voted the 2004 Best Small SUV by Car and Driver. The new all-wheel drive Subaru Forester, a 210-horsepower security blanket you can test drive. Get up to $2,000 customer cash or 1.9% financing on select 2005 Forester models. Pizza Hut's having a national pizza sale. sale. Buy any pizza at regular price and get any medium pizza for just five bucks more. I'll get a supreme regular price and a pepperoni. Five buckaroos. Meat lovers. Five aroma. Peppers and onions. Five arino. Sausage. Cashbot. Veggie lovers. Five as Five as lemon chama. Pizza Hut's national pizza sale. Buy any pizza at regular price and get up to five medium pizzas for just five bucks each. The sale's so good you gotta go for more. Hope the kids are hungry. Gather around the good stuff. Hey, <laughs> funny seeing you here. Yeah, finally. It's not going to be easy. Nope. Sympathy. Great. Nicorette. Tried it. Rather just chew on a cigarette. It's new. Mm. Tastes like gum. New Nicorette Fresh Mint. It has a totally fresh new taste, and it's softer, more like real gum. This might be the smartest thing I've ever done. Definitely. New Nicorette Fresh Mint. Start chewing, start quitting. This is the fifth annual Silicon Valley Football Classic from San Jose. Got a good one for you. We're staying up late to see these two teams, Troy and Northern Illinois, never played before. And Troy has the football now. First and 10 from the 13. They got up 14-0, but Northern Illinois has stormed back. Betterson takes a hit and gets a first down. Boogie Hickenbottom make, making, the, making the stop, but that's a 12-yard gain for Betterson. Northern Illinois coming out of the MAC. Joe Novak, their head coach, last season did not go to a bowl, even though they were 10 and 2. You might recall they beat Maryland, Alabama, and Iowa State, but still the bid did not come. There were more teams bowl eligible last year, however, than this year. This season, only Akron was bowl eligible and did not get a bid. Of course, South Carolina and Clemson didn't go because of their altercation. And so a couple of spots opened up, and Northern Illinois grabbing this opportunity to go to its first bowl game since the 83 California Bowl as Jermaine Richardson gets the first down carry. Troy, under head coach Larry Blakeney, won its last four games. The last loss was the first start for D.T. McDowell. They only lost to LSU by four in Baton Rouge. Then they ripped off wins against Idaho, Florida Atlantic, Louisiana Lafayette, Middle Tennessee State. And this is really one of the best defenses you will see in the country, nationally ranked in several categories. And they have a true freshman quarterback, D.T. McDowell, who can flat out fling it, and he does it. However, Jason Samples can't hang on to it. Well, you said it best, Pam. D.T. McDowell can only fling it. He's pretty accurate in his passes for a young quarterback. And a lot of times you see these young quarterbacks just guide the football and hoping it gets to the right receiver, but D.T. McDowell not only has velocity, but he has an uncanny way of getting that ball out of his hands pretty quick. 
right on track for the receiver. And Samples can help him out by making that catch on the sideline. Now third and eight, and the Troy coaches tell us that Samples can, excuse me, McDowell can throw the ball 80 yards in the air. What a gun. Well, that's why it's important to put another pot of coffee on the, <laughs> on the stove, because he's going to fling it 80 yards here sooner or later. On third and eight, however, they decide to give it to DeWitt Betterson. And he is stopped well short of the first down by Brian Atkinson. Well, I think both these teams, Pam, have gone through a chess match and feeling each other out. And, you know, you get three and a half weeks to a month of preparation. These teams never faced each other before. They don't know the personnel matchups, but very sound football teams, interior offensive line, interior defensive line, and the kicking game. They have evenly matched. A great punter here for Troy and a great return guy in Sheldon for Northern Illinois. Dan Sheldon, seventh in the country in punt returns, averaging just under 17 per. And it's blocked. The punt is blocked. Dustin Uchik blocks it. And Northern Illinois, that is the ninth time that Olmstead has had a punt blocked in his career, second this season. And Northern Illinois in terrific shape. Well, there's a punt block team that knows exactly how to get after the kick, the punter. It's a nice job, well-designed play coming inside there. Taking the ball right off the punter's foot. And Dustin did a great job just laying out the fine sophomore from the state of Wisconsin. Gets the Huskies back in scoring territory. Dustin Utschick plays free safety. And also, he's a heck of a special teams player. A.J. Harris gets his first carry. And there's Utschick. Winna what is that? Winnicombe, Wisconsin. The pride of Winnicombe getting, his, getting the punt block and giving his team terrific field position. I'm sure mom and dad and family are waving their pom-poms, jumping but down in the living room. Their son came up with a big play for the Huskies. It's up to Josh Aldi to capitalize on this turnover for Northern Illinois. Now second and eight for the Huskies. On the 12-yard line, they've scored the last 14 points of this football game. Well, that's a smart thing by Josh Aldi asking for a dry football. And the umpire usually has a towel in his pocket, wipes it off. Quarterbacks are always fickle about that, Pam. You know, even though it's raining outside, there's going to be a few raindrops. Both these quarterbacks have strong arms, very accurate. I'm really impressed early in this game how well they're throwing the football. And you saw the, the Northern Illinois logo on that football. Each team provides its own ball. So as it is, Northern Illinois has the ball, they have their own balls. And all they got the dry one, now second and eight. Gives it to Harris. And Harris is dragged down behind the line of scrimmage by DeMarcus Ware, number 94. And you talk about a great football player. You were looking at him, one of the best defensive ends in the country right now, Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Year. Auburn, he grew up within walking distance of Auburn Stadium. Auburn did not recruit him. He was kind of skinny, about 6'3", a buck 90. They didn't know what position he'd play in, in uh, college. He grew up to be a terrific defensive end. Well, undersized for a defensive end at 6'4", 230. But his speed and his heart makes up for any inefficiency he has. Third and nine, that pass incomplete, going for Sam Hurd. He was covered by Adrian Gent. So now on fourth down, Chris Nendick, the true freshman kicker, comes in for the Huskies. Well, Sam, Sam Hurd is their big play threat on the outside. Does a nice job getting inside, but the ball was just thrown a little bit too far inside. And Sam Hurd has three touchdowns on the year. Unable to capitalize on that third down drive. So Nendick comes in to attempt a 30-yard field goal. It's 5 of 8 from 30 to 39 on the season. They get 6 of 9. So the blocked punt turned into three points by Northern Illinois. 17 straight points for the Huskies. Joe Novak, his team disappointed without by not getting a bowl bid last year. Kind of a reaction. His team is up 17 to 14, coach. It has more standard safety features than any SUV in its class. It is the only small SUV to earn the highest possible ratings of all crash tests by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. 
It has been voted the 2004 Best Small SUV by Car and Driver. The new all-wheel drive Subaru Forester, a 210 horsepower security blanket you can test drive. Get up to $2,000 customer cash or 1.9% financing on select 2005 Forester models. People everywhere are experiencing a breakthrough. I'm full! Fullness from a value menu. This is my dad. He's full. The Big Bell value menu from Taco Bell. With filling items like half-pound burritos and big double tacos. Designed to keep your stomach and your wallet full. What are you supposed to be? I'm full. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. I'm a pirate. Get full on value. Think outside the bun. For those who never quit, the battery that never quits, Energizer, keep going. I'd like to experience a total system meltdown. I'd like to lose all of my music files. I would really love to get a virus and give it to all my friends. Millions of Americans are just asking for a computer virus because they're not nearly as protected as they think they are. I'd like it if someone stole my identity. That's why America Online now gives away virus protection to all our members, absolutely free. That'd be great. Thank you. Want a better internet? You belong at America Online. This New Year's Eve, you can wear one of these and look stupid, or you can wear one of these and look smart. Trojan latex condoms, the most trusted. Have a happy and healthy New Year! ESPN 2's 2004 Silicon Valley Football Classic. Brought to you by the completely reinvented vehicles from the new Subaru. Driven by what's inside. City, proud sponsor of the 2005 Rose Bowl, New Year's Day on ABC. And Taco Bell, think outside the bun. That is the outdoor skating rink, also in downtown San Jose. It's been closed a little while because of uh, some rain in the area. And that young man is Ronald Harper, a senior linebacker, backup linebacker, also a special teamer. His brother Roman plays for Alabama. They play tomorrow in the Music City Bowl, the Gaylord City Music City Bowl against Minnesota. And his parents are here, and they're going to try to get there in time to see the game tomorrow in Nashville. Dave Ryan will have more on that in a second as McKelvin gets the kickoff. And he is tackled down around the 25-yard line. That's the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. And the Harper family, his dad, Ronald, played at Alabama State and also with the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, they're going to stick it out as long as they can. And then uh, get themselves a little red eye to try to get to Nashville. What a great story of supporting our kids. I think both Harpers are seniors, one's at Alabama, one's here playing for Troy. And what an experience for a parent taking bowl opportunities and follow their kids around the country. A couple of kids with football scholarships too, which is huge. <laughs> that helps. That How about helps that? Really, yes. First and ten now as Troy tries to come back. Flag is down. McDowell spins. And picks up a few yards. Brian Atkinson makes a stop, but we have to check the marker. And Northern Illinois is lined up defensively offside once already tonight. This is an ACC officiating crew. Joe Ryder in charge as Northern Illinois jumped offsides. Let's go down to Dave Ryan now with more on the busy Harper family. Rhino? Yeah, Pan, they're just checking their watch a moment ago. Ron is here. Brian, that's uh, Roman's brother and Ron Jr.'s brother, Talia's sister, and Mom Princess back there as well. Now, Ron, you're checking your watch because in about half an hour, you got to get yourself to SFO, San Francisco International Airport, to catch a flight. Where are you going? We're going to Chicago first, and uh, we go to O'Hare. We've got about an hour and a half uh, delay, and then we're going, uh, going down to uh, Nashville. Nashville. So this is a pretty crazy night for you. You're going to get almost the whole first half in before you get to watch uh, Roman play tomorrow. We're going to get the first half in. We might have to speed a little bit. <laughs> we're going to get a half in at least. But I understand, Brian, you guys are, are travel savvy. You already checked in. You checked your bags. You have your boarding cards. You're ready to go, right? Exactly. So uh, now we just got to get to the airport. I know we're going to stay here in the rain no matter what, at least to the third quarter. And then we'll just head back out. Um, 
Now, we understand that you guys have your Alabama gear in addition to your Troy gear. Where is that stone? Definitely, definitely. All we got to do is just change the T-shirt. And my wife got to just change the jersey right there, and we're good to go. <laughs> Tal, you having a good time with all this? Yes, sir, I am. I love my brothers. I got to follow them wherever they go. <laughs> That means cross country, Pam. They're ready to go. They got the boarding passes and everything. That is. That's very smart traveling for the uh, for the Harper family. Very exciting for them. As uh, they'll be uh, getting out of here, San Francisco Airport. We're about uh, 45 minutes from here. And uh, you know, that's what college football is all about. That, great? that is tremendous. Got a wonderful family there, the Harpers. Oh, what a wonderful tackle! Javen Lee taking Dewitt Bitter Betterson down in his tracks and uh, just a moment ago mr harper ronald after he talked to dave ryan it's like yeah one more check <laughs> one more check of the if only time could stand still for this family <laughs> taking this wonderful game here yep. and get on a plane i know they have those red eyes out of uh, san francisco it is 9 30 pacific time they usually leave around 10 30 or 11 sometimes as late as 11 30 so they'll get there and Get to the beautiful city of Nashville and watch Bama play tomorrow against Minnesota. Third and seven, McDowell tries to get away from Lee, and he does, but is stopped short of the first down. Lee was able to corral him eventually. And good coverage now by this Northern Illinois defense, which has stiffened up after giving up touchdowns on Troy's first two possessions. Now Coach Novak and staff have made a nice adjustment on the sideline. They're taking away that big play potential that Troy seem to exhibit here in the first quarter and Javen Lee and Brian Atkins are two all Mac linebackers have been catalysts to get this team turned around defensively remember the last time Thomas Olstead tried to punt it was blocked by Dustin Utchick. So let's see what happens He's had a history of having punts blocked the Northern Illinois special team goes back on coverage, and there's the dangerousness, the speed of Dan Sheldon as he escapes and gets a nice punt return. Leotis McKelvin makes the stop, but that's a 26-yard return for Sheldon on a 50-yard Olmstead punt. Dan Sheldon, one of the most dangerous punt returners in the country. A little shake and bake, and he is gone. Good field position again. The Huskies. This is the fifth annual Silicon Valley Football Classic. Troy got out to a 14 to nothing lead on Northern Illinois, but has had four straight three and outs. Northern Illinois scored 17 straight points, and they have the football once again. Good field position from the 42 after a very good Dan Sheldon punt return. Garrett Wolf has a 50 yard touchdown run and picks up about seven on first down. Just a straight ahead inside zone play that Northern Illinois balances up the two tight ends. They just let Garrett Wolf pick a seam and run behind his strong offensive line. But what Troy does defensively, they rotate their front four interior defensive linemen, and Demarcus Ware stays fresh along with the other defensive linemen, Eric Thomas and Malone. Some pattern they get into, but they gotta find a way to stop this running game. Six yard game, second quarter. And they go right back to him. Garrett Wolf slips a little bit on this turf around the 50 yard line. Adrian Gent with the stop. Tomorrow, Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN with two big games. First at 3.30 Eastern, Jared Zabransky and unbeaten Boise State meets Stefan LaFour's and Louisville in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. At 7.30 Eastern, Chris Leak in Florida take on Brock Berlin in Miami. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl also available in ESPN HD. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And I know a lot of people are looking forward to Boise and Louisville. Those are the two highest scoring teams in the country as Northern Illinois picks up another first down. So uh, settle yourself in. And there's going to be some points scored. Yeah, a lot minutes. of points scored. Yeah, there's not going to be much defense. And I know both those coaches are so happy to have this matchup and well anticipated. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of viewers tomorrow. 
25. Yep, that game is, uh, it's already technically tomorrow on the East Coast, It's <laughs> right? Because it's 12-something-something something in the East Coast, so that game will be Friday, either tomorrow or later today, depending on where you have to And be. there'll be a lot of something-something going on tomorrow <laughs> on that field. Capital One Bowl Week, just sit in front of your TV and don't move, it's the best. First and 10, now in Troy territory, Wolf again. Tries to sidestep the tackle, but he was tripped up by Eric Thomas, the senior from Atlanta. And as Mike mentioned, they do like to rotate the uh, the front seven, keep the guys fresh. And this Troy defense really is something. Eighth in the country, giving up only 15 points a game. Seventh in the country, giving up only 91 yards per game on the ground. And so far, Northern Illinois has 78 yards on the ground. 50 of them on that Garrett Wolf touchdown run. Well, it's a prime example of strength against strength. Northern Illinois' rushing game and the rush defense of Troy. Got a good battle going on here. Aldi throws it. Jake Nordine, the tight end, had to turn around and was unable to gather it in. Pressure there by Robbie Farmer, the linebacker, coming in on the blitz as the uh, rain really starts to pick up here in San Jose. Well, Josh Aldi had his open tight end in the flat. Could have turned into a big play, but under these conditions, was unable to, to grab that pass. You see the rain is really starting to pound down. It's been uh, going off and on really since early this afternoon. Baldy on the season completed 56% of his passes. They really missed him. The first four games of the season, he only played three snaps, and they really missed him. They barely lost to Maryland, also lost to Iowa State during that time. Aldi as Wolf picks up the blitz, and then Aldi has no other option but to throw it away. His tight end, Brad Sieslak, got all tangled up, and more pressure from that Troy defense. Well, Bernard Davis did a good job. They got fooled the first time. Fool me once, fool me twice. It's not going to happen. A late, excuse me, Mike, a flag has come down very late, and you talked about strength against strength, and there you see it. A great offense against a terrific defense. I don't know what that late flag was. It's probably going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct on Troy's defense. Maybe some words or some extracurricular activities were going on out there. And Larry Blakeney certainly wants an explanation. As You got the unsportsmanlike conduct against Troy. Well, that hurts. You know, Troy did a good job smelling out that screen, that throwback screen. You don't need to add insult to injury. You did a nice job defensively. After the play, on Sportsmanlike, number 27 on the defense. 15 yards, result in the first down. With Bernard Davis, one of our leaders on the defensive side of the football, 102 tackles on the year. Probably got into a shouting match and said one too many words, and the official was right there. Yeah, it was not a physical on Sportsmanlike conduct. It was indeed something that he said. And the official reacted to it through the flag. And Davis is going to take at least the next play off. So first and 10 now from the 32. Northern Illinois, once down 14 to nothing in this game, has really taken control. And second quarter is the most, second quarter is the most productive quarter for them offensively. Paul will go long. And the intended receiver, Marcus Perez, yet another incompletion. Well, I don't think we have to talk much about the footing on the field. These conditions are very difficult for these young athletes to participate on, but when the ball's in the air, equal opportunity for the defensive back and the receiver in that play. And Holly just trying to take advantage in a first down play. You got momentum back on your side with that unsportsmanlike penalty on Troy's defense. Johnny Falk, he is one of two Trojans with five interceptions on the season. Derek Ansley, the other one, they lead the country. They had 25 interceptions on the season, number one in Division 1A. Good ball skills, I would say, and they're ball hawkers. Second and 10, Wolf following his big blockers, and he trips up on the turf and goes down. But Garrett Wolf picking up eight yards on that play. You know, that was that turn back draw where you sprint to one side and give it to Wolf on the return. Nice job on the right side by their all Mac performer. Jake Verstady, he's a two-time All-Mac performer, academically, he's extremely intelligent. 
40 consecutive starts, Pam, wow. in his career. That says a lot for that right tackle. I'll tell you, four of their five starting linemen on the offensive line were all MAC performers. Not bad at all. One reason why they were so proficient on the ground. Third and two. Pitch it to Wolf. Tries to get outside. And there's the speed of the Troy defense. Wolf unable to turn the corner. John Falk. Coming up to make the stop short of the first down as we go down to Dave Ryan. Yeah, Pam did think Garrett Wolf runs left there for Northern Illinois. If he comes right here, not only is the lighting not so great because of our power issues early, but the footing is really rough. You can see in this corner how much of this grass natural surface has been torn up in warm-ups and walked around the whole field. Notice this particular corner was by far the worst, and we saw two separate plays, including Wolf on that run right, lose his footing. So all game long, both sides, when they're coming to this near corner, where Northern is going right now. It could be some trouble with footing. I'm sure Dave Ryan has his three three quarter inch or five eighth inch cleats out there for his tracking. I know he's got the Gore-Tex working today. Good work down there, Dave. Nendick, who is hit from 30, comes in and misses from 42. So Nendick's kick falls short. Northern Illinois still hanging on 17 to 14 over Troy in soggy San Jose. I truly believe. Welcome back to San Jose. This is the Silicon Valley Football yeah. Classic. Northern Illinois leading Troy 17 to 14. Four and a half minutes left to go in the first half in San Jose. Troy with the football. They have really struggled offensively after clicking two touchdowns in their first two possessions. Betterson, their leading rusher in the history of Troy University, tackled by Ray Smith. Troy's last four possessions, an interception, a punt, a blocked punt, and a punt. So four straight, three and outs. We'll give credit to that Northern Illinois defense that's led by their all-MAC performer, Brian Atkinson. They do a good job defensively running to the football, not as well as Troy does, because Troy has tremendous speed defensively, but very sound. They just play that straight 4-3 defense with four interior defensive linemen and three linebackers that just flow with the running back which direction he goes. Second and five for Troy. Back to Pedersen, and he goes down. A terrific tackle by Javen Lee. The leading tackler on this team gets his third of the day. We talked about earlier, Pam, how this defense just lines up, attacks you, and finds a gap inside. But Javon Lee does a nice job. Let's look at this replay, just shooting a the gap. They don't blitz a lot, but as soon as they, they identify which way the ball is going, they're going to pick their areas and go ahead and shoot inside. And Javon Lee breaks down real nicely and takes Betterson down. Lee, one of those first team all MAC performers. Again, he did not play the first quarter of this game because he was late getting to the charter plane to get out here. And tell you what, Joe Novak, he's a disciplinarian. that not put up with anything, so he made him sit out the first quarter. He's responded well. Flag is down, probably a holding coming up, but McDowell loses the football, pounces on it. That slick, wet ball falling out of his hands. They're doing such a nice job in the first quarter, Pam. Ball security is so important in this game. Kind of self-defeating right now. Self-inflicting penalties. Holding number 79 on the offense. Penalty has declined. Fourth down. Junior Lewis Saint with the hold. So now let's make it another four and out. Five straight times now that they have had the football and have done nothing with it. Thomas Olmstead in. He had a 51-yard punt last time out. And Dan Sheldon, with this last punt return, has gone over 1,000 career yards. Only one of three players in the history of the Mid-American Conference to go over the 1,000-yard mark. And he's standing on his 46. Good punt by Olmstead as Sheldon retreats with a fair catch. And they get it from the 45, 38-yard punt, no return. Northern Illinois, while they were here on Tuesday, went to Alcatraz. And anybody who comes to the Bay Area, you got to do this. Have you done this, Mike? Have you gone to Alcatraz? No, I haven't, but oh, uh, I've had a lot of friends that have 
spent some time in there. I bet, I bet they have. And they also, the kids, they got to go out. A lot of great things about Bowl Weeks is a lot of community service. They went out and uh, saw some uh, kids groups. Brian Atkinson, in particular for Northern Illinois, was talking about how cool he thought Alcatraz was. Pam, I had the good fortune of playing in four bowl games in my college career. Such a wonderful experience, a great reward, no matter where it is in the country, just to have an extra game and some practice behind you. You grow up quickly in these bowl trips. Now, the coaches love the extra practice as Wolf is stopped in his tracks. Bernard Davis coming up with his third tackle. For Troy. I like for Northern Illinois to come back with some kind of type of play action. They got the running game going pretty well. Pretty much a tight end dominated offense with their big play receiver, Marcus Perez and Dan Sheldon. I know the conditions are getting a little bit more challenging, but right before halftime, you wanna, might want to take a shot down the field. All these missed his last six passes after starting off four for four, making 0 for seven now as he was trying to get Sam Hurd, that falls incomplete. Coming up next, the Burger King halftime report as our iron horse, Reese Davis, in the studio along with Mark May and uh, that other guy, what's his name? Oh yeah, Trev, Trev Alberts. Yeah, I got Those my Trev Alberts ha <laughs> hairdo going here in this rain. You gotta get a little bit more hair though. I <laughs> you gotta get I'm a little, a little bit longer. Older. I'm no, a little I don't bit... mean thicker, I mean longer. No. Cause yeah, Trev's got the hair going. But uh, those three gentlemen will join us on the Burger King he, halftime report. He reminds report. me of like a neat freak. You know, he's always dressed nicely, got he's the so hair part of yeah. the hands and all that he's stuff. He's got the hands going. Halsey gets hammered as he lets that one go, and it's completed. Chateau Powers inside the 10-yard line. DeMarcus Ware laid a licking on Halsey, but he still completed it for 47 yards. Well, that's, it. that's that shot that we talked about right before halftime. Great protection. Interior offensive line. Well, Josh Hawley took a shot from DeMarcus Ware. But get credit to Shotan Powers. Blazing speed, get behind a defender. Number eight, Johnny Falk. Difficult conditions. Look at that perfect spiral in the rain. Almost like a rainbow coming down on your bread basket. Well, that was a beautifully thrown football by Hawley. First and goal now from the nine. Garrett Wolf territory and he does take it and somehow is able to gain a yard on that play. Garrett Wolf scored a 50 yard touchdown run earlier today. He has 18 rushing touchdowns on the season, 21 total. That is a Northern Illinois single season record and not bad considering that he was not the starting tailback for hey, the first half of the season. You're right, Pam. He did it in six and a half games and Talk about durability and explosion. I know Coach Novak going into spring ball was talking about through fall training camp, trying to get him 10 or 12 touches, get him started off slow. But he's come on, it's been a muddy mic and a national secret in the running game. Paul, the under pressure, throws it away as there was big time pressure up the middle led by Franklin Lloyd. Well, Dan Shell, number five, he took a shot down the field after that ball was thrown. Those secondary people, not only are ball hawks, they have 25 interceptions to their credit this year, but he's their big play potential. He comes out of the game for a quick breather. Sheldon's second team all Mac. And uh, been just a, their big play guy. Seabiscuit. Yeah, that's, the, that's the buzz word right now for number five. <laughs> but you know, the enlightening thing about Dan Sheldon, he has 35, close to 3,500 all purpose yards for the Huskies. Third and goal. And Haldy keeps it himself and is stopped about a yard short of the goal line. Derek Ansley makes the stop. Fourth and goal, and the Northern Illinois fans who are seated in front of us yelling, go. Josh Haldy, very smart, intellectual individual. He took a shot at the end of his play. Quarterback ball security is so important down here. You got great field position. And the smart thing they're doing right now is making sure they make the right call here in fourth down. Joe Novak is from Mentor, Ohio, just a terrific part of the country for football, a great coach as we take it back down to Dave Ryan. 
For the all-time great Northern Illinois receivers, P.J. Fleck. And congratulations, late Christmas present for P.J. Signs a new three-year deal with the 49ers today. Yeah. You play your first game against the Super Bowl champion 40, uh, Patriots this weekend. What's that like for you to get off the practice squad and uh, now you're officially a 49er? Oh, it's great. It's a dream come true. You know, there's so much hard work put into the season. And, you know, if you stay persistent and work hard, good things happen to you. About Joe Novak, as Pam just mentioned, uh, he's put so many years into that program. You know him so well. What does this mean for him to, and the program to get to a bowl game? You know, I'm just so happy for him, our program, our alumni. You know, they've worked so hard. Coach Novak came in here six, seven years ago to build the program back up, and everybody stayed with him. Everybody stayed strong, and, you know, he was very persistent. And, uh, you know, he definitely deserves everything he gets. He's a first-class guy, and uh, he's representing our university in a first-class manner. Now, as you were telling me earlier, the weather's been great here in the Bay Area until your team got here. What's the story? They're bringing the Illinois weather with them. It hasn't rained here for five months, and all of a sudden they're, uh, they're bringing the, the weather with them. But, uh, you know, they're just happy to be here. They don't care what the weather's like. We're in the Bulls uh, first time in 21 years, so we're happy. Offensively, Garrett Wolf and, uh, and Josh Holly playing so well here, especially in the second quarter. What do you see from their offense in this game so far? Uh, they're doing They're doing so. They're, they're, they're controlling the line of scrimmage. You know, they're, they're able to run the ball, and Josh is throwing the ball extremely well in these conditions. And, uh, you know, they're, just playing, they're playing with their hearts. And that's, that's a great thing to see about our Huskies. You know, they always play with their heart. And it, it, I'm just so proud to be an alumni. And, you know, it's fun watching them. B.J. Fleck, good luck. First NFL game against yeah. the Patriots this weekend. All right, thank you. Pam? That's a, what a great week for him. He gets to see Coach Novak and his former teammates and then play in the National Football League. And it was P.J. who gave Sheldon the Seabiscuit nickname. And Joe Novak, well, you, we talked to Josh Haldy yesterday, and he gives so much credit about bringing Coach Novak bringing in quality kids. It took him a while. They had that 23-game losing streak when he uh, first started. And, uh, boy, he has done a great job with Northern Illinois. Three straight years in which they have won at least eight games. And after the timeout, Michael, they're going for it. Fourth and goal from the one. Why not? Their defense is playing so well in their powerful running game. Strength against strength. Oh, and Holdy takes it himself. Josh Holdy on the bootleg. Touchdown, Huskies. And P.J. Fleck gets a high five and a hug. It's unfortunate that they weren't able to get to a bowl game last year because P.J. Fleck was such a wonderful player for the Huskies. And Josh Haldy, the smart a quarterback, great play call by the offensive coordinator. Great execution by Josh Haldy. Here comes a throwback block by Jake Nordine. They got him for a penalty, didn't they? I think Jake Nordine said a little Mr. Ware, number 94 for Troy. Another one, sportsmanlike conduct penalty. Kind of the referees, it's the second one they've called for uh, for some yapping on the field. Josh Haldy has scored his, has scored another touchdown. His rushing touchdown, his second of the game. We talked to him yesterday, Pam, and I think both you and I can agree. The very intellectual kid, soft-spoken, poised, always under control. Just knows, I know he's going to be successful whatever he decides to do. I know he's going to get ready for combines after the season's over, like you talked about earlier. Some team will pick him up because he's such a smart quarterback. Edmonds extra point is good, and the thing about Josh, he does have so many options. Even if the NFL doesn't work out, he's already lined up some things in accounting. Very bright young man. Considered actually going to an Ivy League school, was looking around. It looked at, he really liked Yale. There's, that's a good looking dog, the Husky running around. But uh, Northern Illinois offered him and he took it because he got the full ride and it's really worked out. He saw, he saw Josh peek to his left, right side there to see where DeMarcus Mare was lined up. DeMarcus Ware was kind of fooled in that play and there's P.J. Fleck. He's got a little money in his pocket, signed a new contract. Might take a few of these guys out after the game, I'm sure. Coming down from uh, San Francisco, San Jose, for those of you who are not, not familiar with the area, about 45 minutes south of the great city of San Francisco, just a little bit more inland on the South Bay. And what a great scoring drive. Northern Illinois, in case you're just joining us, was down 14 to nothing in this game. Troy scored on its first two possessions, but the Bulldogs, or, or excuse me, the, uh, the Huskies' defense stiffening up and the offense has taken over. And P.J. Fleck talked about how the offensive line has controlled the whole second quarter, and the output is a strength that Northern Illinois has in the second quarter. This team is battle-tested. You know, this program has been battle-tested. You documented, you know, how what they had 33 consecutive losses. I believe you talked at one time, but I think right now, Coach Novak's got this team believing. It's 
instead of past years hoping to win. This team believes every time they take the field and going 7 1 down the stretch, Pam, is pretty strong for a MAC program. 24 unanswered points for the Huskies. Two rushing touchdowns for their quarterback, Baldy. Calvin fielding the kickoff. And boy, great effort by McKelvin as he drags some guys about 10 yards with him and is stopped at the 49-yard line. The Harper family, up, oh, dad's up. They're, they're about to go to the airport, the San Francisco airport, where they will take a red eye and get into Nashville tomorrow to see their other son, Roman, play for Alabama against Minnesota in the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. We wish them safe travels near John across the country. I know his son right there is probably telling Dad we have to get on that 405 or the 5 and just head north and get up the coastline, board that flight. But it's just a treat to have the family members follow you throughout the country in bowl games and just throughout the whole season. Ronald Harper, number 41, their son playing for Troy, and Roman playing for Alabama. McDowell. Trying to get something going, and that one is almost intercepted. He overthrew Jason Samples, but Ray Smith was closest to the ball. Yeah, that ball kind of got away from him a little bit, but D.T. McDowell needs to pick it up a little bit right before halftime. We might see him launch a 60-yard pass if they don't convert here on second down or third down, launch one into the end zone. But I think from a mindset standpoint, Pam, this offense is fluttered. And they got into a lull here. The running game really hasn't been effective. And give credit to Northern Illinois defense for an attack mode. McDowell only 3 of 11 through the air. Going again. Boy, you could really see the sloshy field as he was throwing towards Eugene Hampton. Another incompletion. Hampton was covered by Alvin Hansbro, who is really a muddy mess. <laughs> These are fun games to play in. Fun games to play in. You don't care about your feet getting wet. But the latter part of the play here, it's nice to get sloppy dirty. I know the equipment managers are going to put some extra detergent in their laundry tonight. That's what it's all about. Remember the days when you were back there as a young kid playing out in the mud? I know my guys in the neighborhood where I grew up in Calumet City, Illinois. We used to love rain, mud, slop. All right, third and ten. The blitz coming from the secondary. And the pass again incomplete towards James Earl Cray. So DT McDowell really struggling now is this passing offense for Troy. You know, Northern Illinois defense did such a good job at disguise. I mean, recognizing things and shooting gaps. And they realize the only way Troy can hurt them is through the air, through big plays. And DT McDowell getting on a perimeter. They just go ahead and attack him and force the issue with him. He is three for 13 in this first half does have a touchdown and an interception mcdowell's never thrown more than 17 passes in one game and he already has 13 here and on fourth and 10 and 10 seconds left they're going for it. you know where they're going pam they're going all the way down to the end zone we'll see the kind of arm strength kind of blitz them he can throw it 80 yards in the air he just throws it up there and it's out of bounds so now three of 14 for the first half was McDowell as there was no receiver anywhere near the football. And with four seconds left, now Northern Illinois has a chance perhaps for a Hail Mary. Well, they might want to rethink that whole thing, punting that ball away, gain some momentum. Obviously, field possession changes, but I know Northern Illinois is going to take a strike in the end zone on one last play. That's something I'm sure Coach Blakeney didn't want to see happen for his offense. They need to regroup in a heartbeat in the locker room, Pam. They need to make some adjustments. Whatever they were doing that first two series to start the game, we're going to have to look at that game plan again and try to find ways to attack this defense that's responded well for Northern Illinois. McDowell hit three of his first five passes. He's missed his last nine, including an interception. Ice cold. So now, Halvey, let's see what he's got. Three receivers. Lifts it up. And it is knocked down at the nine-yard line. Robbie Farmer among the Troy defenders in the way. 
But what a terrific job by the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Down 14-0 after Troy's first two possessions. They lead it 24-14 as we go to Dave Ryan. So, Joe Novak, how did your team turn it around so quickly? Down by 14, 24 straight points. Well, unfortunately, we've been in that situation a few times in the past, and we've, we've gotten used to it. We reacted well, kept our poise. What's the best way to continue that momentum in the second half? Well, we got to run the ball. They've really done a great job taking our run. We've hit some play action pass. We got to run the ball better. Thanks for your time. Okay. Pam? All right, Rhino. 94 rushing yards for Northern Illinois in the first half. And a great job by Haldy. And there go the Harpers off to the airport <laughs> as they head out to Nashville to see their other son play as we send you to halftime. The Chick fil A Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. Hope you're enjoying the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Reese Davis alongside my good friends and partners, Trev Alberts and Mark May. One of the most eagerly anticipated bowl matchups prior to the BCS games, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Cal was passed over in the BCS standings by Texas. A lot of voters in the polls switched their votes after the Bears' final game against Southern Mississippi. Jeff Tedford's team had an opportunity to make a point in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl against Texas Tech. But by the same token, the Red Raiders also had an opportunity to make a point. Early on, it was J.J. Dynamite. J.J. Arrington averaged seven yards per carry, best in the nation this year, getting deep in Red Raider land, and Marshawn Lynch, the freshman, would score. Wonderful job of powering the football in and not being denied, getting across the goal line for the score for Cal. This epitomizes Cal's problems. They have injury at the wide receiver position. Freshman Robert Jordan can't haul in Aaron Rodgers' pass. Vincent Meeks picks it off. Great job there defensively by Texas Tech. That was a story you mentioned it, not on the same page with the, those wide receivers. But the quarterback who was on the same page with his wide receivers, how about Sonny Cumbie right here to Jared Hicks, and all of a sudden Texas Tech up 17-14. to 14. And Mike Leach's team would not look back. Late in the first half in a tight game, Torian Henderson goes on. It's a 10-point lead for the Red Raiders at the break. Third quarter, first Texas Tech drive is second and 19. Come to Joel Fulani, who logs on, and he is part of the Gone Network. 60 yards, 31-14. Red Raiders, guns up, starting to blow them out. And Cal's running out of chances on third and five. Great job right there up front. Kenyatta Dawson doing a good job getting pressure. Nowhere to go with the football once again. Not on the same page was Aaron Rodgers with his wide receivers. And we know that Leach does not believe in pulling in the range. And there was no need to here either. It was only a 14-point lead. And now the exclamation point. Cody Fuller putting it on there. 45-24. to 24. Texas Tech had the lead at that point. Cal got one more in there. And look at the numbers for Sonny Cumbie, the senior quarterback. Think of all the great quarterbacks who've played in the Holiday Bowl in the past. Robbie Bosco, Steve Young, Major Applewhite. None of them ever throw more passes in a Holiday Bowl game than Sonny Cumbie. And he was the fifth quarterback to throw for more than 500 yards in bowl history. This was a statement game for Texas Tech. They were the ones that were able to make the statement rather than Cal. Well, if you look at Cal's defense, they never faced an offense like this, a high-powered offense that threw the ball 55, 60 times a game. Sonny Cumbie was hot in his football game. They never got pressure on him the entire football game. He was relaxed in the pocket, took his time, went from read one to read two to read three, threw the ball vertically down the field to play. Cal's defenders could not keep up with the wide receivers from Texas Tech. That was the story. It was an easy pitch and catch game for the Texas Tech offense. Sometimes we forget why bowl games are so important. Obviously, it's a reward for great season, but it's also about recruiting, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're Mike Leach now and you think every high school quarterback out there happens to sit back and watch the Holiday Bowl, you know, Sonny Cumbie's gone. You think as yourself as a quarterback, what if that was me? I get to throw the ball 60 times, 500 yards of total offense. You mentioned the statement game it was for Texas Tech, and surely it was, but also a statement in terms of recruiting. If you want to play quarterback and have some fun, they throw the ball an awful lot at Texas Tech. Yeah, very different type of offense than USC has. USC's powerful. Cal held them to about 200 yards, but the matchups didn't work very well for the Bears against the Red Raiders. In the Continental Tire Bowl in Charlotte, Boston College, which is headed to the A ACC next year. This was a virtual road game for them going into Charlotte to take on North Carolina where the crowd was bathed in Tar Heel blue. Paul Peterson with those screws in his hand for suffering a broken hand late in the season. Back for Tom O'Brien's team and finding Joel Hazard who well he took the hazard on and went right over the top. That's a heck of an effort by Joel Hazard going. He wants to score here but it's just short on the one yard line. Great effort by that young man. 
And you know, we always talk about that tight end down the goal line. Look at Peterson right here. Roll right fine. David Cachetta is tight end right there. Difficult to defend the tight end down the goal line. Boston College ties it up at 21 at that point. O'Brien has talked many times about the importance of Peterson with a three-point lead in the fourth. The mobile quarterback was trying to run for the first down. He just dropped the football, and as he scooped it up, Tommy Davis hit him. And Peterson suffered a broken leg on the play. Mm. It's going to make Boston College have to attempt a field goal, and they also had the emotional loss of their leader. So on the field goal attempt, the call by Tom O'Brien, brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, you went your own I'm inflection close. with that. Ryan Oliger taking the hand off the kicker who had struggled. He had a field goal blocked and missed an extra point. O'Brien actually replaced him as the kicker, but let him run there. Much to Peterson's delight, he got into the end zone. Peterson was named the MVP, and Boston College beats North Carolina 37 to 24. Andre Callender putting up the best rushing performance up to that point in the bowl season with 174 yards on the ground to complement Peterson's 236 through the air. PC has now won five straight bowl games. We're at the break in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Back on the Burger King halftime report after this. Halftime report not too far away from our game in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. The Emerald Bowl at SBC Park in San Francisco this afternoon. And for 39 Navy seniors, it was their last opportunity to play college football. For many of those, they will be headed off to war, they realize. Aaron Polanco is a pilot. He is probably going to be deployed to Iraq within the next 18 months. And against New Mexico, he was piloting that Paul Johnson offense one more time, running in from 14 yards out to tie the game in the first quarter. Dontrell Moore, the fine running back from the Lobos, took a wicked hit there, knocked out of the game, did not return, was on crutches later in the game. That was a vicious hit. Polanco here going in for his second touchdown. That tied him with Temple's Walter Washington for the most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback this year. Cole McCamey picked off by Josh Smith, and that would lead to Polanco, who's been doing it on the ground, doing it up top to Corey Dryden. When you run the ball so effectively, play action pass right here, you get everyone to step up. Corey Dryden beats the defender. Touchdown, Navy, 21-7. But here's the bread and butter, guys. You run the little option. Nobody stop. Oh, stop the fullback. Got to stop the quarterback. Nobody has the quarterback. Aaron Polanco in the end zone for a touchdown, 28 yards. A huge day for Aaron Polanco. So he has a rushing touchdown lead among quarterbacks with his 16th of the season here. New Mexico's D.D. Cox snuffed out on a fourth down play of the goal line. Navy with a 12-point lead. You see the swarming midshipman defense. Now McCamey with the last chance. You notice how much time had evaporated between the goal line stand by Navy in this last ditch effort down 15. Paul Johnson's team rolling to the 34-19 victory. They win 10 games for the first time since 1905. The reason so much time evaporated, Navy took over after that goal line stand. They ran 26 plays, moved it 94 yards, and held the ball for over 14 minutes. Thing of beauty, Reese. It doesn't happen often for an offensive coordinator. Perfection. It, you, that's tough to do against air yes. to hold it that long without some type of mistake. 34 19, Navy getting its 10th win of the season. Freddy coming your way on New Year's Eve. We'll get it started with the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Alabama taking on Lawrence Maroney, Marion Barber III, and Manny Sota at high noon Eastern time. That's on ESPN. And these other two games, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, Boise State and Louisville, Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Miami and Florida. Very intriguing, particularly with that high-powered Cardinal offense. Can't wait to see the Liberty Bowl race and what's the best friend of a quarterback. An of offensive course, lineman. It's a power running game. Forget the <laughs> offensive line. It's Eric Shelton, 6.7 yards a carry. The explosiveness. But yet, guys, the nimbleness and speed to get to the outside. How about 255 pounds of Eric Shelton coming right at you? I'll point you out. You established a run. Stefan LaFleur's the accuracy. Look to the right, go back to the left. He's the difference for this offense. Once they establish that run, they can play action pass. 74% completion percentage for Stefan LaFleur's. This offense and Bobby Petrino hasn't been stopped yet this year. Louisville's offense versus Boise State's defense. Can't wait to see that. Can can Boise slow them down? And can Louisville slow down Boise State's offense? Well, you know the only team to beat Louisville? Who? 
Miami. Miami plays Florida. This is going to it was be a real heck blowout. Of a game in the Peach Bowl. <laughs> no, it was a very good game. And you, you look at this matchup. I think it's going to be interesting. But here's the key, the game breaker, Devin Hester. You don't punt it to him. You don't kick it to him. You keep the ball out of his hands if you want to win. But if you want to win, if you're Miami, you make sure he touches the ball as many times as possible because he has speed, athleticism. No one can catch him. This is a type of athlete that you've got to have in the game. Offense, defense, special teams. He is a game-breaking player. You must have him on the football field at all times, and you must make sure that if he's on the field offensively, you point him out. There's Hester. There's number four. Let's find out where he is. Put his safety on him. Let's make sure we know where he is. And another prevailing theme throughout bowl week is how teams in transition thrive. Charlie Strong is going to coach the game for Florida. He's been the defensive coordinator under Ron Zook while they await the arrival of Urban Meyer. Playing a rival like Miami and trying to beat Miami and Florida State in the, first, in the same season for the first time since 85 might help the motivation. There's a power so awesome, so irresistible, you'll do anything to get your hands on it. Introducing M3 Power, the first battery-powered shaving system. Now you can skip read Report is presented by Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. This time of year, New York is typically a buzz, waiting on that big ball to drop in Times Square to signal the coming of the new year. What they're really waiting to drop on in in New York is a big left-hander to drop in on the Bronx. It appears that the Randy Johnson to the Yankees deal will, in fact, get done. Randy Johnson would come from the Diamondbacks to New York in exchange for Javier Vasquez prospects and cash the deal is not finalized they've got to put it in writing possible that it could happen on New Year's Eve might take until Monday to actually get all of the T's crossed and the I's dotted also in other sports Jermaine O'Neal will not have to serve the final 10 games of his suspension handed down by Commissioner David Stern for fighting against fans in that November 19th brawl between the Pacers and the Pistons O'Neal had appealed to have that suspension cut from 25 games down to the 15 serve Served. Temporarily, a judge granted that, and then another judge made that permanent by slicing David Stern's sentence. The NBA saying not exactly sure why the collective bargaining agreement, which Stern appeared to have the power to impose the sentence he wanted to, was cut down by the arbitrator. But that is indeed what has happened. So O'Neill is back for the Pacers. The Bowl Challenge Cup presented by Cooper Tires in the Big Ten by virtue of Ohio State's victory over Oklahoma State undefeated so far. In fact, only two conferences are unblemished thus far. The Big Ten is one, and the other one is the SEC. Of course, the SEC hasn't played yet. Alabama will break the seal for the Southeastern Conference in the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl against a team from the Big Ten. So something potentially will have to give. Second half is coming right after this. Welcome to ESPN's Capital One Bowl Week. Welcome back to the fifth annual Silicon Valley Football Classic, the first one that has not featured Fresno State. Northern Illinois leading Troy at the half, 24 to 14. And if you're joining us late, Troy got out to a 14 to nothing lead. But Mike, boy, Northern Illinois stiffened up on defense and they got their offense going as well. Well, they made some great adjustments. And I think Coach Joe Novak alluded to the fact that they were a little erratic on defense initially or throughout the year, but they responded well. Their offensive line or defensive line came with some big stops. The turnovers were huge and the block punt. But Garrett Wolf, this gallop, a little small guy, 5'7, 170 pounds, 447 speed. That started the whole momentum swing. And then defense came up with some pressure in the pocket on DT McDowell, shutting down the running game. And Northern Illinois really surprised me the way they responded in the second quarter comeback. Yeah, Northern Illinois with a block punt as well as an interception. So Larry Blakeney's team from Troy now down by 10 at the half. He's standing by with Dave Bryan. Larry Blakeney, your team jumps out to the 14-0 lead, but they storm back with 24 in a row. How do you change that momentum? Well, we got to quit making mistakes. Uh, we turned it over on offense. We gave up two or three big plays on defense. 
We uh, got a punt blocked and a punt return. It set them up in great field position. You can't do that against a bad football team, much less a good one like this one right here. So we just got to pick it up. We got to play better in all three phases. You told me before the game tonight, Coach, you have not had a lot of experience as a team in rough conditions like this. How big a factor are they? Well, we uh, we, we played in some rain. Uh, of course, we don't have the – we've got uh, the artificial grass at our place now. Two years ago, we played in mud like this about six times. So we've been in it before, but not much lately. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Larry Blakeney was an Auburn quarterback as we take a look now at the Goodyear first half stats to score the most important part. And Troy allowing on average only 15 points a game, eighth best in the NCAA. They've given up 24 in the first two quarters. Well, it happens quickly for Northern Illinois. They're strongest output in the second quarter historically through the year. But the thing that surprised me, Pam, was 94 yards rushing that Northern Illinois has gotten on Troy. Troy only allows 90 yards on average throughout the whole season. It's won and lost the last scrimmage, and Northern Illinois has done a great job coming back after that 14-point shocker. 50 of those 94 yards coming on one run, the 50-yard touchdown run by Garrett Wolf. You take away Garrett's 50-yard touchdown run and his other five carries, he only has a grand total of 11 yards. DT McDowell, the true freshman quarterback, got off to a great start, but has gone ice cold. Now 3 of 14 with one touchdown and an interception. And yes, the rain has been a big story here in the San Francisco Bay Area as the field conditions continue to deteriorate. The ball's slippery. And Troy will give Northern Illinois the ball first. Well, I'm interested to see how Troy's going to respond in the second half. I'm sure Coach Blakeney got in their face a little bit and challenged them. First bowl appearance here on national TV. You don't want to come out here and lay an egg after that strong start. Lionel Boogie Higginbottom gets the kickoff of Thomas Olmstead. He has a nice lane and blasts right through it. Olmstead, the kicker, pushes him out of bounds. But Boogie with the big, big play, a 43-yard return on the kickoff. Well, that was that was huge to start the second half. His interior kickoff return does a great job picking out their assignments, tracking. The tacklers, but picket bottom does it all. The boogeyman from Robertson High School in Chicago. That's how you set the tempo for the second half. Got that nickname because he was a very good dancer in high school. Now he's a hip hop DJ on the internet radio station at Northern Illinois. All these passes delivered low to Sam Hurd, but he is able to get his hands under it for the completion. Well, it looks like Northern Illinois is going to. Press them a little bit, start off with a fast tempo. They come out with the opening pass. Josh Haldy had trouble in the second quarter trying to complete passes, obviously because the conditions are pretty poor, but I like to see him go to that short passing game, Pam. If you don't force the ball down the field, you're going to have a lot better chance of completions in the short intermediate area. John Bond is the offensive coordinator for Northern Illinois. And he Talked about emphasizing the run, trying to get that going, especially on a sloppy day like this. But Northern Illinois has done a really good job of mixing things up. Second and three. A little play action pass. Baldy going deep and finding Marcus Perez. The freshman takes it in for a touchdown, but there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. It's a hold against Northern Illinois, so the touchdown will not stand. Well, I don't know who was guilty of that hold, Pam. It's going to prove very costly for the Huskies. It kind of shocked Troy coming out with that big kickoff return. Got a nice pass completion. Holding number 62 on the offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Beat second down. Doug Free, a sophomore who they think is a great prospect here at Northern Illinois. Well, Doug Free is a great prospect. He's the best athlete in the offensive line. Just got a little late. I, I tell you what, he's fighting real hard up there. That's a questionable call in my book. And but that's, the, I'm sorry, DeMarcus Ware, who, who is who he was trying to, to hold back. Free, only a sophomore, already 6'6", 290, in second team all-conference, and that wipes away the touchdown pass. Well, in these conditions, Pam, you don't get too many opportunities to go up top, but they made an adjustment at halftime and saw something in the defensive secondary. Aldi throwing off his back foot, and that pass is almost completed. 
Chatone Powers had both hands on it, but couldn't come down with it. Well, Northern Illinois, right before they left the field, Pam, Coach Novak talked about establishing the line of scrimmage and running the football. We've seen nothing but balls going through the air, and that's one of those passes Josh Haldy. I'm sure he wish he had Becky threw in a triple coverage. Almost a great catch by Chatone Powers. Rod Martin on the cover, the true freshman for Troy. Now third and 13 for the Huskies. A.J. Harris in the backfield. Aldi again going up top, so nothing but passes, and that one is almost intercepted. Johnny Falk, who has five picks on the season, almost had number six. Well, this is very uncharacteristic for Northern Illinois. A predominantly running team, averaging 240 yards per game, comes out, and they're out of their six plays they ran here, five of them were passes. I just thought maybe the intermediate to short passing game might benefit this offense a lot more than airing out 20, 30 yards down the field. And that's really not what's, uh, what Joe Novak is known for. Rather conservative coach offensively, but they came out flinging it. Had a touchdown pass called back by a holding call, and now Anthony Gallagher in for his third punt. And good at placing the ball. That's great hang time. McKelvin, who's a dangerous punt returner, gets smacked down at the 15-yard line. Head-on collision, six-yard return on a 42-yard punt. Dustin Utzig, who had the blocked punt earlier in the game, comes up with a heck of a hit on this special teams play. Okay, you both in Illinois, very first bowl trip in 21 years since they played in the California Bowl, taking on Troy University, which has never been to a bowl game before. In its fourth season of Division I, they play. Troy has the football down 10. And that play, we heard whistles. Betterson hesitated, and now he takes off. And now the officials are conferring back at the line of scrimmage. I distinctly heard whistles, as did Betterson and most of the players on the field right before the play. ACC officiating crew, that's Joe Ryder, the referee. I don't know if maybe it was a whistle from the sideline, but definitely there were whistles in the stadium. They're trying to seek out. Came from over there. That's what he's saying. I know Betterson didn't stop. He was off to the races. Well, he hesitated, and then when he, he didn't hear any more whistles, he kept going. That's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for Troy University to come out in the second half. The play started. Why stop it? Please put the play clock to 13 minutes, 40 seconds. We have a, someone blowing the whistle in the stands up in this area. We'd like to get the police over in this area if we could. The first down, we replay the down. And Joe Ryder calling out the cops. <laughs> San Jose's finest. Let's listen again. You can distinctly hear the whistles there, Mike. Could have been somebody in the band. I know the, the band major, uh, the band directors, they have whistles, get their band ready. Well, the band is nowhere near where those whistles came from. The band is on the other side of, they are to the left of us. The whistle came to the right of us. And Ryder obviously upset, and uh, rightfully so, as is Joe Novak and Coach he's a, Blakeney. I'm sorry, Pam. He, he's got good ears, that referee, to know exactly where it came from. I know it wasn't inadvertent by the officiating crew in the field, but that's what you're taught to do as a running back, continue playing. So they put the time back on the clock. 13.40 left to go in the third quarter. First and 10. I put an asterisk by that play right there, Pam. Could have been a different scenario for this Trojan ball club. And start all over again. Betterson with the pitch and a much different result as Brian Atkinson comes up with his fourth tackle of the game. Five yard gain for Betterson. I think it's safe to say it's been an interesting night all around. And that whistle is no different wherever it came from. Troy was terrific in its first two possessions, but since then, nothing. An interception, four punts, one of which was blocked. And then they gave it up on downs. And that young man, 
DT McDowell, their two true freshman quarterback. A great baseball prospect for the, Cal the Anaheim Angel organization. He plays with them during the summer. As Jermaine Richardson goes down in a heap, let's go down to Dave Ryan. All right, Pat, thanks a lot. As dominant as Northern Illinois has been after falling behind in this game, Detroit 14-0. They do have bad news on the injury front. Dan Sheldon, the nation's leading receiver, 23.6 yards per catch, is out for the game. A broken collarbone on the left side, trainers tell me, happened sometime in the second quarter. They thought it was only a minor shoulder injury. Took him into the locker room, and it was, unfortunately for Dan, much worse than that in his final game as a Husky. Still in the locker room recovering now, guys. All right, he was supposed to play Lionel in the Hula Bowl and the Village's Gridiron Classic a couple of postseason games, but that will not happen. Collarbone injuries are the most painful to endure. On third and four, McDowell keeps it, and he is stopped short of the first down by Martin Wilson. Well, it's unfortunate that Seabiscuit Biscuit won't ride anymore tonight. He's been a wonderful four-year player for the Huskies. Tremendous student. Hails from Elgin, Illinois. The 5'10", 180-pound senior. And they also lose him as a punt returner. He's one of the fine punt returners in the nation, as we saw McDowell limp off the field a little bit. Thomas Olmsted has had one punt block today. And now Boogie, Lionel Hickenbottom the primary punt returner for Northern Illinois. That is the fifth three and out for Troy tonight. Boogie, thick at bottom, backs away from it, and the ball rolls dead at the 32-yard line. 44-yard punt, no return, and Northern Illinois with a 10-point lead gets the ball back. The concern for the Trojans right now is their quarterback, D.T. McDowell, is uh, limping around a little bit. We'll be back. Rainy San Jose. EN2's 2004 Silicon Valley Football Classic. Brought to you by City. Proud sponsor of the 2005 Rose Bowl. New Year's Day on ABC. Paramount Pictures' new film, Coach Carter, starts Friday, January 14th. Rated PG-13. And Alka-Seltzer. Break up the full feeling of indigestion and pain with Alka-Seltzer. Holiday spirit still in here in San Jose. A lot of spirit for Husky fans as they lead Troy 24 to 14 here in the third quarter of the fifth annual Silicon Valley Football Classic. We'll see if Northern Illinois gets back to the ground game. I get talked about. AJ Harris continues in the backfield, not Garrett Wolf and Harris with a nice run. Stop just short of the first down. Well, AJ Harris throughout the First part of the season, even last year, was getting a lot of touches. The young junior is getting his opportunity tonight because it's all been Garrett Wolf the last six and a half games. And that's what Coach Novak talked about. He has the luxury of having two different type of running style running backs. It's a nice luxury to have for the Huskies. You see Harris now, and Harris is the power to Garrett Wolf's speed. Bigger back and take more of a bruising. Play action for Halby, but everybody's covered. Trying to improvise, and he's going to force this pass in to Marcus Perez, but it was knocked away. Third and one coming up. Coming up Saturday, David Green leads number seven Georgia against 16th ranked Wisconsin in the Outback Bowl, 11 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Coverage starts at 9.30 Eastern with Chris Lee and Kirk breaking down all the New Year's Day games on College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. For more information, Log on to ESPN.com. I know that's going to be a physical game, Pam, because Wisconsin always makes it physical. Georgia's had a wonderful season. David Pollock winning the Lombardi and Bednarik Awards. First Georgia player to win either award. And Garrett Wolf is on the sidelines. He has not carried the ball. As on third and one, Halby keeps it. And appears to have picked up the first down, so Wolf has not gotten a carry here in the second half. Well, John Bond, the offensive coordinator, needs to go back to the running game. They got the first down there. AJ Har AJ Harris is the guy that's gonna get the workload here, I guess, in the third quarter. But they have a dominating offensive line. And four of the five offensive linemen making all MAC teams. That's a, that's a that's outstanding, Pam, because the MAC conference is 
A lot of parity, a lot of tradition in that conference. A lot of big offensive backs. What a run by A.J. Harris as he catapults over a would-be defender and picks up another first down. Ronald Harper, whose parents are on their way to the airport to, to go to Nashville to see his other brother play football, makes the tackle. Well, that's the power that A.J. Harris can bring to this offense, leaping over people, continue to get yards after the first contact, but arm tackles will not bring him down. He's not a hard guy to pick out, Pam. He's a lot taller than Garrett Wolf. He has, running... Look at the offensive numbers now. We talked about strength versus strength. And that defense for Troy really is uh, starting to get picked apart now. We haven't called DeMarcus Ware's name in a long time. Nope. 118 rushing yards now for Northern Illinois against a Troy defense that only gives up on average 91 yards a game. Northern Illinois takes its first time out of the second half. We'll be back with more coming up in San Jose. Romeo. Continues to fall here in San Jose. We have not seen Garrett Wolf in the second half, and Dave Ryan tells us why. Right on. More trouble, unfortunately, Pat, for Northern Illinois with injuries. We talked about Dan Sheldon, their star receiver. He's out with that broken collarbone. Now Garrett Wolf has got a strained hip, we're told by team trainers. The trainer says he's cleared in the play, but coaches are being cautious, and for now, Garrett out of the lineup. We'll see how long that lasts in terms of the coach's approach. All right, Dave, and among the 84 yards, a 50-yard touchdown run that gave Northern Illinois its first score, but they do have the luxury of having A.J. Harris, who started six games this year. There he is, number 24. And A.J. taking advantage of the playing time as he sprints for yet another first down. Harris, 11th in the MAC in rushing, over 70 yards a game on average, 25 more on that play. Yeah, let's watch the left side of this offensive line here as Doug Free and, and Ben Lewick do a good job establishing the perimeter and to get up to that second level. Once they get to the second level, it's all A.J. Harris after that, but this offensive line is just taking over this whole game. 310, 290 on the left side. You got your center, Van Anker, at 285. And that's a load right there, a 225, A.J. Harris. Missed a game and a half, twisted his ankle in the first half against Bowling Green on September 24th. And that is when Garrett Wolf really emerged. As he gets it yet again, picks up a yard or so. And Harris and Wolf, what a combination. As you see, only Cedric Benson and Vincent Young at Texas combined for more yards in a backfield. Boy, we got to see Ecker and Polanco today for Navy in their very uh, impressive win against New Mexico. But boy, uh, Wolf and Harris, a great combination. And there under that slicker is Garrett Wolf. Well, he's had a tremendous season, Pam. And whether he gets back in the game or not, hats off to him. Tremendous surprise. Kind of a national secret for a long time. And I'm sure in Coach Novak's eyes, a delight to have in your ball club. Wolf, only the sophomore, did not play last year at all. He was one credit short of being eligible academically. He said it was a very long year for him. The year before that, he had ankle surgery. So two long years, had his chance this year. As Harris is wrapped up, Tory Lankford, a junior from Jacksonville, Alabama, on the stop. Well, the backside pursuit of Troy Trojans did a nice job the last couple plays. He had a missed block in the play before, but this play, was designed to go outside, and A.J. Harris tucked it up inside in that backside pursuit. Came down hard on him. Harris and Wolf combining for 130 yards on the ground. And again, Troy, one of the best in the country, seventh in the nation, giving up only 91 per game on average. DeMarcus Ware up here on the right side. Hasn't done much here this morning this, this evening. And that pass is tipped and almost intercepted. Bernard Davis, the linebacker, who has a couple of picks on the season, almost came down with another one, and now fourth down. So the Troy defense holds. Well, Bernard Davis is a football player. He breaks on the eyes of Josh Haldy. Got some hops up there. That would have been a tremendous interception. I'm sure he'd been going the other way. That would have been a huge play for their defense, get some momentum back on their side. Davis, second team all Sun Belt Conference this season. Has a block kit, a couple of interceptions, a couple of sacks on the year. Chris Nednick in 
to try from 39 yards out. He hit from 30, but missed from 42 tonight. And that one is good. He just wanted another opportunity from the same spot, Pam, and got a strong leg for a freshman. Yep, Chris Nendick, Nendick is a true freshman, and he gets it from 39. Joe Novak, not usually much of a reaction. What did we get this time, Coach? There we go. I'll be on the phone with uh, his offensive coaches up here in the box, and boy, the offense has done great for Northern Illinois, 27 points against a Troy defense, and this is a season high. The most points Troy had given up all year was 24 to LSU. And a 24 to 20 LSU win in October, so with Nendix 39-yard field goal, the 27 points, the most given up by one of the best defenses statistically in the country. Well, I don't know if they met a team. I'm sure they met a team as big as Northern Illinois' offensive line, but. Northern Illinois' offensive line just does a good job at executing at the point of attack. So Troy down now by 13 points. Leotis McKelvin. More big hits late on as he has stopped just short of the 25-yard line. New Year's Day, join ABC for a great college football celebration starting at, a, at 1 Eastern time. Actually, 11 a.m. Eastern with the Rose Parade. Then follow that with LSU Iowa in the Capital One Bowl. Bowl Championship Series starts with Texas, Michigan in the Rose Bowl, presented by City at 4.30 Eastern. And primetime, Utah takes on Pittsburgh, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl at 8.30 Eastern time. All this on ABC Sports, January 1st. Start your new year off with a big old bang. How are you going to bring in New Year, Pam? Right in front of the TV? Football. Come on. Just like everybody else should. First down now. As the ball carrier is the fullback, Sean Dawkins. And Dawkins doesn't get much. Jason Hutton, a junior from Chicago, making the stop. Dawkins only had 24 carries on the season for 116 total yards. Hey, this defense has been relentless ever since that second drive when they went up 14-0. They've tightened their chin strap up and put some more air pressure in that helmet. They're playing downhill right in the face of the Troy Trojan offense. Now second and 11 as Dawkins lost a yard. McDowell's got to get it going through the air. He tries it, and that pass is thrown way in front of Jason Samples. Rob Lee step for step with Samples, and this, North, this Northern Illinois defense has really done a good job of shutting down Samples, who's their biggest threat. I tell you, you could just feel a slosh in your feet when you're in conditions like this as a receiver. And they're going vertically down the field. They're trying to get some traction. But you don't practice that much in these conditions. And he did a nice job keeping his balance. We talked about great athletes like Jason Samples not slipping. And when you know where you're, where you're going in your route, you hit your landmarks and try to plant with the proper foot. When you plant, plant with the wrong foot, that's when you start to lose your balance on a surface like this. Third and 11, 10 straight incompletions for D.T. McDowell. So he tries it with his feet, and he is dragged down by Alva Hansbro. Alva, one of a set of identical twins in this backfield, Adriel Hansbro, the other one from Madison, Wisconsin. So the only way, way they can tell each other apart, one wears silver jewelry off the field, the other gold, and they both go by the same nickname, which is, of course, twin. So <laughs> if you say twin, they'll both look at you. There, they, there you go, number 11 and number 12. Well, I know the holidays have come and gone, but you might want to upgrade to platinum. Platinum's in now. <laughs> Another three and out, the sixth three and out for this Troy offense. Olmstead's punt. Hickenbottom, flag comes down. Hickenbottom goes down at the 40. 28 yard punt, only a four yard return, but we'll check out the flag. Yeah, I'm surprised Northern Illinois punt block team doesn't go after the punter more. An illegal block against the Huskies. And we think it was on one of the twins. That's a good way to get, get on TV. Block in the back above the waist, number 21. During the return, 
No, it was not number 12, Hansborough. So the Twins off the hook. <laughs> Adriel Hansborough, number 12, on the punt coverage team. I don't think 21 let's was even on look. the field. Let's, let's, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. 12's in the play there, and that's where the flag came down. Adriel, by the way, one minute older than Alva, and Adriel is the one who wears the gold, Alva the silver. Quiz on that later as we come back. Silicon Valley Football Classic continuing in San Jose. Northern Illinois up on Troy 27 to 14. Josh Baldy in his final collegiate game leading Northern Illinois in what has been a very impressive performance against a heralded Troy defense. And yes, this is the Troy team that beat Missouri on national television. They opened the season winning at Marshall. It's the first time in eight years that Marshall has lost an opening game at home. Huntington's a really tough place to play. Troy won that game, but boy, they have really struggled against Northern Illinois. And they did it with defense. They sacked the quarterback eight times that afternoon in the opener. Donna Huntington, West Virginia. Sherrod Martin drops A.J. Harris for a one-yard loss. Garrett Wolf again is out with a hip injury. So A.J. Harris has been the running back for Northern Illinois, a team that uh, is known for running the ball, and they're doing it very effectively. We've already told you that Troy has given up a season-high 27 points. They've also given up a season-high 139 rushing yards. The previous, well, right now with that loss, it's back to 139. That ties the high set by Middle Tennessee. The last regular season game, November 30th. Baldy zips it way too high for Sam Hurd as we go down to Dave Ryan. Last game, it would have been for a player named Shea Fitzgerald from Northern Illinois. As you can see, Pam and Mike, the Northern Illinois players on the back of their helmet with a sticker have the number 76. That was Shea's jersey number, also the number 76 on the front of their jerseys as well. Tragically, two years ago during that terrible summer party in Chicago that porch that collapsed Shea was actually on that porch and was killed back home in DeKalb in the team's locker room they've got his locker there under plexiglass his game jersey spikes pants the whole thing in honor of Shea Fitzgerald this would have been his last game tonight as a Husky and that plexiglass locker will stay through this season in memory of Shea Fitzgerald as well it should run that was just a terrible day but around Chicago, no doubt we'll remember that for a long time. A.J. Harris bowls his way forward for another Husky first down. That's 12 yards. And now 151 yards on the ground. That is a new season high given up by this Troy defense. And boy, Joe Novak, you're, you're kind of coach, huh, Mike? A guy from Ohio, kind of an old school guy, disciplined. He came in and kind of cleaned house when he took over at Northern Illinois and started bringing in high school players. It wasn't a quick fix. Stopped going the JUCO route, said he had to get the right kind of guys in there. And uh, and again, you have to give all the credit in the world to Northern Illinois. How many schools would endure a 23-game losing streak with a coach? Probably just one. One, Northern Illinois. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the team is a reflection of the head coach, and I think a lot of character individuals on this ball club. Coach Novak does remind me a lot of my father, who I played for in high school. A lot of that same old Pam, old school, just like this offense right now. Just handing off to A.J. Harris, old school, buckle it up and go. And he gets five more yards. And Joe Novak is a guy who uh, had some opportunities to play football, but when he got out of high school, out of Mentor High School, he went to where else but Miami of Ohio, the cradle of coaches, graduated there from 1967. Said he knew he wanted to be a football coach since he was in junior high school. And he has coached under Bo Schembechler, also Bill Mallory was the head coach at Northern Illinois. And look at that, that's just unbelievable that he would endure that. And since then, the five winning seasons culminating, they had 10 wins last year, eight wins this year, and their first bowl bid in 21 years. We had a player offsides for Troy. There's a fumble on the play. Cedric Sullivan was offsides, but there might have been some movement on the offensive line. We'll have to check it out. Yeah, Coach Novak was a defensive coordinator at Indiana when I finished up my last year at Ohio State. and We go way back. He was always recruiting our high school. and My father sent a number of players to Northern Illinois to play there. And Coach Novak recruits the Chicagoland area pretty heavily. And there you see some of those those coaches. There's Bill Mallory. Who's the third guy? You know, he shows up. He must be old as dirt. He shows up on every coaching staff, this Lee Corso guy. 
He has been on a lot of them, hasn't he? Just oh. one year at Northern Illinois. I bet you, you go to the 117 Division I schools, and I'm sure he's in 100 of those team pictures somewhere. <laughs> Coach Novak, just to 59 years old and really uh, settling in and great season into Cal. And they are, they've scheduled tough, man. They're playing these BCS schools and have done very well against them. I'm sure Maryland doesn't want to play them anymore. Boy, Harris gets popped. Well, I know one school's going to face them next year in the opener. A team from up north, as we know it in Ohio. Michigan. That's right. This is Capital One Bowl Week continuing from San Jose, California. Troy in its very first bowl game in its fourth year as a Division 1A school taking on Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois, one of five teams from the MAC to get a bowl bid. The MAC, though, only one and three so far in bowls. Bowling Green beat Memphis in the GMAC Bowl. Otherwise, Marshall, Toledo, and Miami, Ohio all lost, but the MAC is representing well tonight. Rick Chris, the commissioner, is here, and he's got to be pleased with this 27 to 14 lead. I know the athletic director at Northern Illinois, Jim Phillips, is, his goal is to keep Coach Novak mentally and physically around for a long time. Harper makes the stop, and there that's what you were alluding to, Mr. Tom. Zach, how about that for opening up the season? They recently signed on to play Michigan. Of course, the one thing about if you play BCS schools, you got to go on the road. Northwestern then comes in, so two Big Ten teams on the road to open up the season. I would love to see that change, though, Pam. I, I know. it to his talented tight end, Brad Sieslak. Sieslak's been quiet all game. That's his second catch, actually. But that one's a biggie for 19 yards. Well, tight ends usually are the first ones that get open in your progression. And here's a prime example, just a five-yard square in route. And Sieslak from Long Grove, Illinois, a 6'5", 255-pound senior, playing in his final game. Nice to get him some national exposure from mom and dad and family. 6'5", 257. He was a high school quarterback, walked on at Northern Illinois, and the coaches didn't see him as a as a quarterback, and they said, we want you to be a tight end, and he totally embraced it. They challenged him to be the best tight end in the MAC, and that's what he turned out to be. First team all MAC at that position this year. And get to the outside, A.J. Harris, as they continue to chew up this very celebrated run defense of Troy. Well, it looks like A.J. Harris had the option to run or pass there, and number 84, Sam Hurd, their big play receiver. A little flip, but he bellies back in the backfield, cocks it for a second, then sees a corner take off and running. Just smart play by A.J. Harris. And he's making the most of his opportunity, Pam. Harris, the junior from Wheaton, Illinois, playing the entire second half because of a hip injury to Garrett Wolf. He's been cleared to play by the trainers, but the coach is being very cautious. They want to keep him healthy. He, uh, he's got a great future. He's got a great present, for, much less a future for this team. More Harris. This is your basic Joe Novak smash mouth football as Harris is the workhorse and gets a first down. Troy defense again. This is a nationally ranked defense, but they are getting spanked. All of their season averages in these four categories have been exceeded. They were eighth in the country at 15 points a game, seventh in the country giving up 91 rush yards, and that is ballooned up to 164 tonight. I know not to the liking of Vic Koning, the defensive coordinator of Troy, who's turned this program around defensively from a turnover standpoint, from stopping the run. And a former head coach at the University of Wyoming, Wyoming knows you stop the run and you stop a lot of offenses. They are getting pushed around. Harris, oh, what a nifty move as he slipped through the hole and is finally tackled by Larry Brown. This, off this offensive line did such a nice job. And it didn't take A.J. Harris that long to kind of get into the flow of the game. And he finds the perimeter, a big 220-pound running back, gets his pads going forward and just accelerates. End of the fourth quarter, A.J. Harris 
running Northern Illinois to a 27 to 14 lead at the Silicon Valley Football Classic. That is the moon over the South Bay area and the rain that has been falling steadily throughout this game. And I have a feeling the Troy fans are a little bit soggier than <laughs> Northern Illinois fans. Saw some of them downstairs during the half. The uh, Northern Illinois fans soaking wet and they didn't care. When you're winning, you dry off pretty quick, Pam, when you're winning. It's, good. it's a good kind of wet as A.J. Harris goes down. A late flag comes in. Maybe some frustration from this Troy defense, which really is not used to being pushed around like this. Again, your composure. You're not going to hurt anybody by shoving them late. Yeah. Self-inflicted penalty, Pam. Comes back to hurt you all the time. Larry Blakeney looking on. A little retaliation. That was Alfred Malone, but he was originally pushed by Matt McGacky, and uh, they got Malone on the retaliation, which happens more often than not. They'll see the second guy, and he gets whistled for the personal foul. Well, Alfred Malone's been in the battle. The guys he's playing against. Offsides, number 99 on the defense, five yards. After the play, personal foul, number 99 on the defense. Half a distance to the goal, first down. I think it was on 96, Pam, instead of 99. For the personal foul, yes, they got Cedric Sullivan. You're correct for the offside, but uh, Malone there for the push, and Larry Blakeney yeah, having a long night. 27 to 14. And now the ball is placed on the four-yard line. First and goal from the four for Northern Illinois. Well, something for Troy to build on this experience, this bowl experience, the extra practice they got in. First time in school history they had the opportunity to play in a bowl game, and they got a relatively young team. They're going to gain a lot of experience from what's going on here this evening. Right now, Northern Illinois trying to lengthen its lead. Harris gets behind a great block by Brian Van Acker and scores the touchdown. 33-14 Huskies. The reason that play was successful, obviously a penalty helps out greatly. But I love the spacing of the offensive line. Their splits are real nice. They're about yard and a half splits. They attack the defense has been on their heels ever since about two minutes left in the first quarter. So now Nendick in to add the extra point. 34 points by Northern Illinois. We talk about the Hogs up front, the guys that don't get much credit until a penalty happens. But it's all, it's all about the linemen up front, across the board from left tackle to right tackle. The Mudders getting their feet big and dirty. Mmm, something smells good. Delivery? It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. DiGiorno? You! Eight points scored by Northern Illinois, the Huskies leading Troy, here in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Northern Illinois fans enjoying a bowl appearance for the first time since 1983, and they're really enjoying it. Their offense has been tremendous, and their defense, I mean, we talk about their offense, but their defense has just shut down Troy. Troy's last eight possessions, 26 plays, 26 total yards, with six three and outs. Perfect. Otis McKelvin gets it at his two, and is cut short at the 17-yard line. Let's go down to Dave Ryan on the sidelines. All right, Northern Illinois grad Rose Froelich and her husband Bob live in nearby Los Gatos. This dog is Chevelle, and she is a local Husky. She was brought in by 
Rose, who decided to email the school administrators about <laughs> whether or not they want to have a dog here because the real mascot from DeKalb couldn't travel with the team. And right after they score points, one of the cheerleaders will bring Chabelle across the field to make sure they can celebrate and stug. You guys having a good time there or what here? They are having fun, and so is Chabelle. I think she enjoys it. She might want to go back to the cows, go on campus. What do you think? I don't know. She's doing a great job for a replacement dog. She's the uh, cheerleader can barely hang on to her. She wants to run like Sea Biscuit. She wants to roll. That's a beautiful, beautiful dog. Rhino. So Chabelle, what do you think? Why is your team having such success here tonight? Oh, I like that. Good sound effects. She's like, love it. Look at those beautiful blue eyes, guys. What do you think of that? Not a bad looking dog. I tell you what, you give me yeah, four paws like that. Dog. Yeah, exactly. I'm telling you, that's a, that's a gorgeous dog. That's amazing that that's, that's a replacement dog. That's a great job by that dog who just wants to, go, to, to run wild. A lot of dogs would be kind of skittish with all these people and big football players around. That, that dog's a ham. Good, good job. The star on national TV. And she's getting a lot of exercise, too, because they've scored 34 points. Not minding the rain whatsoever. Beautiful dog. Mm -hmm. I know my brother has a couple of those. Huskies? Yes. Pretty active. Keeps you young. Oh, yeah. Like to run. They like to move. <laughs> Hand off to Betterson. And DeWitt Betterson, this is a guy who's been clamped down, picked up six on that carry. Betterson, 17 carries for 72 yards. Yeah, his biggest output this year, Pam, was against Idaho, where he had 184 yards rushing. But today, they kept him in check. He started out hot early, and then an inadvertent whistle to start the third quarter. Uh, Betterson, if you're just joining us, is the all-time leading rusher in the history of Troy football. He's the first guy to have back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons this year and last. Or, and he also has 3,000 career yards. First Troy guy to do that is Brian Atkinson with his seventh tackle. That is, however, a first down, a rare first down for this Troy offense. It scored touchdowns on its first two possessions and since then has been shut out. I'm sure Mark Fleetwood is happy to see that first down finally. You know, these players are going to carry this game into the offseason. Not a better way to finish up the thir under 13 minutes left in the game by getting a strong performance here. Believe it or not, folks, that was the first first down of the second half for Troy. They have just been clinched. D.T. McDowell, their true freshman quarterback, gives a lot of credit to Aaron Leak. I think they called the wrong play in the huddle. And you saw him looking at his wristband, and they called the timeout. Aaron Leak was the starter at the beginning of the season, and uh, McDowell took over for him. Time now for our Pontiac game-changing performance. Tune into the FedEx Orange Bowl to find out the game-changing performance of the year. You can vote right now on ESPN.com slash Pontiac. The winning school is going to receive a $100,000 gift toward their general scholarship fund from Pontiac. And among the nominees, unforgettable Junior Lewis Saint picking up a DeWitt Betterson fumble and then rumbling for this touchdown against Missouri. And that tied the game up 14-14. They went on to beat Missouri on national television. I know he's going to get my vote. I'll of, log on later tonight. Yeah, a lot of the big guys are going to vote for him. That was a 63-yard touchdown. It was ESPN's play of the day and play of the week. Our own Mark May gave him a helmet sticker, and he already got a $5,000 donation from Pontiac for his game-changing performance of the week, and now you can vote for the game-changing performance of the year. Betterson with a nice little hurdling move, and now he's breaking free. DeWitt Betterson is tracked down from behind by Lionel Hickenbottom. Boogie gets him, but that's 45 yards, by far the biggest play of the night for Troy. Well, we, just, we just talked about that. Mark played with the offensive corner. Wants to see effort, wants to see continuous play. They had a little collision in the backfield. But Pedersen knows the way to the end zone once you get out in open field. Nice job by Hickenbottom. 
secure that tackle. The latter part of that run. And at this stage of the game, being your first bowl experience, these coaches are going to judge these guys pretty good and make sure they carry some of this into the offseason, some fight. 45-yard run that equals the biggest play of the game. Remember, Samples caught a 45-yard pass on the first drive, and now Samples throwing a pass. Samples has thrown it. That's his second pass of the day, and then he gets up limping. So trying some trickery now as McDowell stretches himself out. It's a very damp, cool day here. Cool night, excuse me, in San Jose. Well, they tried to play earlier in the game, like you said, Pam, almost in the same position in the field. He got rolled up at the end, but DT McDowell, he's got a little sore hamstring. He's selling out. Throwing it back to the quarterback, but that falls incomplete. Now second and ten, and boy, Samples can't even get off the field. As the official has to call time because Samples was not going to make it. That kid's a warrior. We visited with him yesterday. Just a delight to be around. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Let's take a look to see uh, what happened to Jason. Ooh. That's Adriel Hansbro, one of the twins. Samples is a senior from Swansboro, Georgia. Leading receiver on this football team this year. He has over 2,000 career reception yards, over 158 catches in his career. And I'm sure Coach Blakey is going to be sorry to see him go. Second and 10 now from the 25. McDowell on the roll, gets his fullback, Sean Dawkins. And McDowell continues to uh, stretch himself out. Dawkins met with the catch, but McDowell is the concern. And that's McDowell's first completed pass since the first quarter. Yeah, he's just trying to get through this game on Heart and determination. I know it's pretty painful, those hamstrings, and playing in cold weather like this, Pam, doesn't make it any easier. But it'd be nice to see them culminate this drive with a touchdown here. Third and four. And Pedersen gets the first down as he is tackled down inside the five-yard line. 14 yards on that play. It's a simple draw handoff with lead blocker, fullback Sean Dawkins. But Betterson, he's determined to make an impression here, latter part of the game, even though it's his final game. Like we stated earlier, it's just a wonderful experience to play in a bowl game like this on national TV. And you don't get too many opportunities when you're a school like Troy. And they're taking advantage of it no matter how much time's left on the clock. Pedersen with his seventh 100-yard game of the season, 14th of his career. And he's thinking end zone, but he is met head-on by Brian Atkinson. Atkinson now with eight tackles. Atkinson, a senior, and, boy, he's a tough guy. He uh, broke his jaw earlier in the season against Western Michigan and then missed one game. And then when they played Ball State, he was sitting on the sidelines in his, in his uh, sweats, and he said he had wire, cu wire cutters in his pocket. He was going to cut the wires off his jaw, he said, if the game got any closer. But fortunately, they held on to win, and he didn't have to, to be the hero. He pl did play the next week against Toledo as McDowell dives into the end zone. And Troy has scored its first touchdown since the first quarter. They scored two touchdowns on their first two possessions, and they finally punch one in. Well, DT McDowell playing on guts and heart right here. It's difficult. He's got a sore hamstring, but nothing's going to deny him from getting the end zone. It's just building his confidence for next year and what, what's to come for this ball club. He's going to have a lot of players returning. they got a young ball club, and Coach Blakeney likes to see that fight in a young quarterback. His second rushing touchdown of the game and of the season as Wibbs knocks home the extra point. And Troy 
is back to within 34 to 21. So an impressive drive by the Trojans, capped off by McDowell's second touchdown of the night. ESPN 2's 2004 Silicon Valley Football Classic. Brought to you by City. Proud sponsor of the 2005 Rose Bowl. New Year's Day on ABC. Nicorette Fresh Mint Gum. Start chewing. Start quitting. And ADT. America's residential and commercial security leader. Call 1-800-ADT-ASAP. Seen from downtown San Jose, and the happiest people right now in San Jose are Northern Illinois fans up on Troy, 34 to 21. Troy just scoring on a three-yard touchdown by their quarterback, D.T. McDowell, their first drive that lasted more than four plays in their last nine possessions. That was a nine-play, 82-yard drive that lasted three minutes and 40 seconds. Now their defense has to come up big. Uh, Northern Illinois has been punishing them lately on the ground. Marcus Perez gets the kickoff and is tackled down just short of the 30-yard line as we go down to Dave Ryan. Well, Pam and Mike, right after this game tonight, Troy will head to SFO San Francisco Airport and take a charter flight all the way back to Alabama. But these four gentlemen will not. They are the state troopers and local police officer from Troy, Alabama, who are going to guard the team. They have been doing that. Charles Ward, Jackie Hornsby, Ken Kelly, and Wayne Floyd. They drove, guys. They drove from Alabama all the way out here, 2,500 miles. Took them three days, almost a full day to get through Memphis, Tennessee because of ice and snow. And tomorrow morning, they get a good night's rest. They're driving back 2,500 more miles. Scenic route for those four loyal police officers. Man, why can't they get, they can't get on the charter? That's a heck of a drive for those guys. 2,500 miles to Alabama. Well, you can probably go as fast as you want if you're a state trooper. That's true. They With the lights on, yeah, they can maybe do that in a couple of days, right? They call them super troopers. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama troopers, we saw them yesterday. They were here at uh, practice and uh, standing by with this uh, Troy team from the state of Alabama. And Troy, very proud of the fact that over the last few seasons, no football team in Alabama, including Mighty Auburn and Alabama, you know, they, they're right up there as far as uh, success rates. The Marcus Square, you just saw him number 94, gonna be a major player in the NFL draft coming up. A.J. Harris. Speaking of DeMarcus Ware. Marcus coming up with the, uh, with the tackle. Let's take a look at those Alabama football programs. You probably heard of Auburn and Alabama, but since 1991, when Larry Blakeney took over, his team has the best winning percentage of all of them. North Alabama also above the, the two big boys. You know, they're sandwiched in between those two schools, Auburn and Alabama. And when one of those teams play in the afternoon, they try to schedule games at night so they can draw somewhat of a 27,000 seat stadium. Alabama playing tomorrow in the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl against Minnesota as that pass is fired high towards Chatone Powers. This is the fifth annual Silicon Valley Football Classic in San Jose, California. A couple of teams that are just happy to be playing anywhere. Troy and Northern Illinois. Troy's first bowl game ever. Northern Illinois' first since the 83 California Bowl. Coming up next, Rome is Burning, presented by Coors Light, the always opinionated Jim Rome. Fourth and seven, and Troy's going to get the ball back. Anthony Gallagher with his fourth punt of the night. Man, they're one big play away from getting back in this ball game. He almost got a blocked punt there. And that one kind of skipped off the foot of Gallagher. McKelvin with the return. And that's very good field position now for Troy. They'll be at the 48-yard line. 14-yard return on only a 33-yard punt. Tomorrow or later today, depending on where you live in the U.S. And the Capital One Bowl Week continuing on ESPN at 3.30 Eastern. Jared Zabransky and unbeaten Boise State take on Stefan LaFours in Louisville in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. And then Florida and Miami in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl at 7.30 Eastern. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl also available on ESPN HD. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Florida has a chance to beat both Florida State and Miami in the same season for the first time since 1985. Check it out tomorrow on ESPN. 
Field position has been decidedly in Northern Illinois' favor, but Troy, great field position now on the 47. And Betterson, boy, he is moving his legs. Betterson is having a fantastic night. Now 148 yards on the ground, picks up another first down, 13 more. I'm sorry, Pam, like I stated earlier, they one play away from getting back in it. 9.36 left in the clock. The whole mindset's changed ever since GT McDowell got in the end zone. Updating Betterson's numbers now, 148 yards on the ground. His seventh 100-yard effort of the, of the season. He is Troy's all-time leading rusher. Troy has two timeouts left in this game. Of course, in college football, the clock is stopped on first downs. Up a little toss back to the quarterback, and that did not work. Brian Atkinson tackling McDowell, but a flag is down. The line judge probably going to call somebody for holding. Mark Fleek with the offensive coordinator pulling out all the stops tonight. That might not have been the spot right there, Pam, to try some trickery. And hurt by the holding call. I know you're trying to surprise somebody, but when you only got one receiver route, which is a flea flicker, it's going to take a lot more time than that to get the ball down the field. Plus, Samples is hurting a little bit. He's got that sprained ankle. Atkinson was held on the play, and he still was able to go in and sack McDowell. Holding number 33 on the offense. Pounding has declined. Second down. Sean Dawkins, the fullback, is a very Blakeney. I don't think agreed with that call. So they lose 15 yards on that sack. Atkinson. The sixth sack of the season. Second and 23. Back from where they originally started, the 47-yard line. McDowell holding on to it and going down in the hands of one of the twins, Alba Hansbro. Stopping the clock with 8.45 left to go. Picked up about five yards on that play. I'll tell you what, Pam, I'm really impressed with the poise and maturity level that DT McDowell has. He's playing through a lot of pain. He talked about his professional baseball experience. Probably matured him a great deal, but just the experience alone, when he went through that last spring and prior to fall camp, deciding to come and play football here at Troy University. Just, he's gonna be the guy that orchestrates a comeback here. Again, third and 19, we're talking four, ter four down territory. Try to get half of it back here. Four. Third and 19, McDowell four for 16 through the air tonight. Blitz coming, he just gets it off and is forced to throw it quickly. James Earl Cray, the intended receiver, McDowell is really getting beat up. He certainly is, and Northern Illinois doesn't blitz a great deal, but they brought some pressure there, and they beat their interior offensive lineman. You talked about him again, Brian Atkinson. He's got a nickname, I think. I don't know if it's called, he's not the freak, but. The beast. The beast. All American, three. We're actually the third two time first team All Mac player at Northern Illinois, as far as being first team All Mac. Got a sack tonight and has really been all over McDowell. The sack and several more pressures. Thomas Olmstead back to punt for the seventh time. His last one was only 29 yards, he's had one blocked. Bottom getting away from it. And the ball rolls out of bounds inside the five yard line. The Beast doing his job well. Northern Illinois up by 13. There's a power so awesome, so irresistible, you'll do anything to get your hands on it. Introducing M3 Power, the first battery powered shaving system from Gillette. It has M. Welcome back to the Silicon Valley Football Classic in San Jose. The rain continuing to fall, but boy, a lot of these Northern Illinois fans have been standing the entire game. And right now, Troy has to come up with a, a good defensive stop. They are in great position to do so with Northern Illinois backed up on the five. Northern Illinois 
34 points. That is a season high against this Troy defense. I think they're 1.2 points away from meeting their average at 35.2. Yep, this Northern Illinois offense, it was strength against strength. They do average 35 points a game. A.J. Harris, the junior from Wheaton, Illinois, has a touchdown run tonight, picks up a couple on first down. And there are the Northern Illinois fans standing up below us. Quite a few people coming over from uh, DeKalb. And the folks watching back home, it is 1.40 a.m. for the people watching in DeKalb. And the Chicagoland area, I know yes. that there's a lot of alums and students that are still probably hanging out in some establishment. They still open this time of night? Oh, yeah. Good tackle going down. Laverne Johnson tackles A.J. Harris. So this Troy defense, which was shredded for most of the second and third quarters, has started to come back to life. And right now a third and ten for the Huskies. They've gone on spurts defensively. The last two series, they've withstood a test and won at the line of scrimmage. Thomas and Malone, the Marcus Ware, have all stepped up here in the last couple series. They need one more stop to get the ball back and hopefully take another shot in the end zone. They could really use a turnover right about now. And Boy Hall is going to put it up. Completes it. But short of the first down, Jake Nordine, sophomore tight end, is stopped a yard or so short of the first down marker, and they have no alternative here but to punt, punt it away. That was an acre and a half throw from where Haldy threw that ball from. Five yards deep in his end, end zone from the left hash all the way out to the right. Tells you about his arm strength. It's Nordine's first catch of the night, 14th on the season. It's Vic Koning, the first year defensive coordinator, was the head coach at Wyoming and let go after the season. And he called Coach Blakeney cold and Blakeney uh, gave him an interview and offered him the job almost right away. It was very impressed with him and he has an NFL style defense and has really fit in well with this blazing speed that most of his players have. It didn't take him long to get that itch back into coaching. You know, he tried to take some time off for his family but once a coach always a coach. Gallagher's punt is a short one. And McKelvin Great field position as he has just a seven yard return, but it was a 27 yard punt. So Troy, for many of their players, the first time they've ever been to California, they saw the Golden Gate Bridge. They did some shopping downtown at uh, Pier 39 and also the, the community service. Got to visit with some kids. The Troy players having a great time. The weather has not been that cooperative. It was nice yesterday, but boy, a lot of rain in California over the past few days. But uh, these kids just excited to be at a bowl game. First ever for Troy University, which stopped being Troy State, by the way, last April. Now known as Troy University. Betterson gets another carry. It's like Donnie Boston's been a guy that's been pulling around from the right side to the left side. They've run that play at least a dozen times. And Betterson's been able to pick his hole and run behind an interior offensive line. Betterson is continuing to have a terrific night. 23 carries now for 151 yards. This is his final collegiate game, a senior from Stark, Florida. And he's coached by a pretty good running back in his day, James Joseph. He's a running back coach his first year at Troy University. One of three former Auburn players on Coach Blakely's staff. Coach Blakely himself, a former Auburn player, as tackle is made. Javen Lee, there's Blakeney with that, the Auburn ties and uh, loves living in Troy. James Joseph, who coached at Auburn High School. Coached to Marcus Ware in high school, so Coach Blakeney got two or three players from that high school before he brought his prize recruit, James Joseph, over to coach the running backs. He had a nice five-year career in the NFL. Boy, and what a terrific college running back he was at Auburn. Played in five Auburn-Alabama games. He got a medical red shirt, so 
He knows what it's like to play Auburn. And McDowell, was he able to complete it to samples? Yes. Wow, McDowell was bobbled the snap in the first place. The point had footprints down there. Mr. Official, he's on that white line. There's a lot of fight in this ball club. Oh yeah, that's it, that was water splash, not the white line. 25 yards on that play, third catch of the night for Jason Samples. Big, big play for the Trojans who are not going away. Four minutes and 26 seconds left in the game. They still have two timeouts left. We were teasing Coach Blakeney about the onside kick the other day. <laughs> said, I'm not a gamble, man, but if I have to try it, I'll try it. First and goal from the seven. McDowell this time does lose the football, but fortunately for Troy, Betterson is able to recover it. He almost bobbled it on the last snap, and that time he could not hold on to the slick football. Yeah, we've had pretty much an air-free football game from a turnover standpoint, but... And this was two plays ago on the samples reception, so he almost lost it there. And then the last play, he did lose it. Second and goal from the 11. They lost four yards on that play. They go back to Betterson. And that time he is met by a group of Husky defenders. They brought that zone blitz concept again, and they just pursued well to the football. They're responding nicely. I know that fumble helped out, but when you come on second down, you try to bring some pressure and fog up that delayed draw. So third and goal now from the nine. Definitely two down territory with the clock ticking away. McDowell completes it, but they needed to get into the end zone. Gary Banks, a freshman from Melvin, Alabama, makes the catch, but now fourth and goal from the four. No choice here but to go for it. Well, whatever happens, D.T. McDowell just has to stay alive. I'm sure he's going to have the ball in his hands to a large degree. But on fourth down, young quarterbacks take as much time as you need to deliver that ball in the end zone. And remember, D.T. McDowell is a true freshman. A great baseball prospect. We'll go back and get back into the Angel organization when the summer comes back as Troy Burns its second timeout. He hit 310, did McDowell. Two triples, seven RBIs, and 21 games as a center fielder. Was invited to an extended league in September for top prospects, but uh, decided to come and play football. Dave Ryan has more on that, Dave. Yeah, Pam, all-state baseball player in Stone Mountain, Georgia, near Atlanta. Threw over 90 miles an hour as a pitcher who was drafted in the 20th round. He Baseball amateur draft last summer by the Angels, as we mentioned, as an outfielder played center field. We talked about hit 310. He was leading his team in the Arizona Summer League with Mesa when he had to really make that decision time. Crunch time came for DT McDowell. Do I play football or not? And Troy kept honoring its commitment to him and kept in contact too, even though he went to play baseball with the Angels organization. Eventually comes back to Troy just a couple days before fall camp starts, guys, and earns the starting job six games into the season. Really an amazing story for the true freshman, D.T. McDowell. And he called the coaches, Rhino, and uh, said, Coach Blakeney, is it all right if I come? And Blakeney's like, heck yeah, of course you can come. They were pleasantly surprised and happy that he came. And as Rhino mentioned, he did win the starting job. He has been starting since the LSU game on December, the, uh, excuse me, October the 23rd, and he almost beat him. Rome is burning, presented by Coors Light, coming up next year on ESPN2. I'm sorry, Pam, just to add one more point. Now, Tucker High School, he led his team to a 34-4 record. An honor student in high school. Undeclared major yet, but he's got a lot of time to decide what he wants to do from an academic standpoint. You should all game. For Troy, they need this one. McDowell running away from trouble, flings it into the end zone. It's incomplete. Getting his hands on it was James Earl Cray, but he was unable to hang on, and Northern Illinois takes over at the four. Well, D.T. McDowell did exactly what we talked about, stay alive in the pocket, take as much time as you need. And coaches tell you, you can always retreat backwards. But James Earl Cray had the ball in his grasp, just couldn't squeeze it hard enough. Great athleticism. Oh, he had, he had an opportunity there. It was missed. 
They had their chances down the stretch here, Pam. Now, Cray has been kind of inconsistent this year, according to the coaches, but has played better the last few games, but unable to bring that one in. And good result for Joe Novak. Now he just needs his team to hang on to the ball for the final three minutes and six seconds. And their first bowl game since 83. And boy, this guy, A.J. Harris, what a job he has done in the second half. Taking over for Garrett Wolf, who hurt his hip in the first half. 16 yards on that play. And A.J. Harris, he'll be back next year. He's just a junior. He's put together pretty good, Pam. Yeah, he's over 100 yards, too, on the night. I mean, physically, he looks like a pretty durable running back. Played at Wheaton North High School. He's got a lot of power behind those pads. Northern Illinois now up to 197 rushing yards tonight. Harris's career high, by the way, 124 yards. Did that against Southern Illinois earlier this year. He's up to a buck two tonight and gets it again. How about Ben Lewick, number 79? They call him the comeback kid. The left guard pulling around there. He's had a number of injuries in his career. Coaches are surprised that he's made it back, but credit to him for his drive and determination out of Oswego, Illinois. The Trojans uh, starting to feel this sink in on second and seven. So we'll go up to uh, San Francisco Airport, flying home tonight. Northern Illinois will fly home to their campus as well as Harris gets yet another carry. Well, I've, I've enjoyed this experience, Pam. We're watching Detroit University Trojans come out here and fight. Northern Illinois Huskies coming away with a victory. It's been a long time for these teams. Ten wins last year, did not get a bowl invitation, and Northern Illinois grabbed onto this one, and they're about to win their first bowl game since they won the California Bowl 21 years ago. It was their first game period. There's a... Garrett Wolf, who smiles. He uh, only was able to play the first half with the hip injury, and uh, he will be back next year. What a talent that young man is. The only person they got to replace is that quarterback, Josh Baldy. Been a three-year starter. And we're going to have some battles throughout the spring. And A.J. Harris, yet another carry. He continues to pad his numbers. And Northern Illinois over 200 yards on the ground against Troy. The last, this is the first time in the last 22 games that Troy's given up 200 yards. Here comes the Gatorade. Double whammy. It's been a long time, 21 years, and a lot of struggles this program's been through, but they've resurfaced. They're gonna try to sneak up on the old coach. He saw it coming, so he took off the, uh, the headphones. They had another barrel. Uh, he, had, he had one of his lookout guys, that trainer. Yep. Baldy takes a knee. And Joe Novak, congratulations. A terrific season for Northern Illinois as they will finish 9-3. and three. Troy finishes 7-5. and five, And we will see Northern Illinois open up next year at Michigan and then at Northwestern. Capital One player of the game. What a way for Josh Haldy to finish his collegiate career. Or, Terrific student, graduated a couple of weeks ago with a 3-9 GPA. He's going to try the NFL. He's been invited to the Combines, and he's our player of the game. Well-deserving. Had a tremendous career for the Huskies, and he's going to be missed. But it's been a fun year in college football, Pam, for you and I and the whole crew. Yep, our crew, Bart Fox, our producer, Tim Sutton, our director, Kathleen Godone in the booth, Tony Britt, our stat guy. It's been a great year. Northern Illinois wins it 34 to 21. And Josh Haldy, part of the winningest class since 1966, 33 victories in the last four years, capped off with a tremendous 34 to 21 win over Troy. Coming up next, Rome is Burning, presented by Coors Light. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. It's been a great season as we say goodnight to you from San Jose. Hello and welcome to our year end.